everybody. Episode 5, Nick America. Thanks for being here. Thanks for still being here. If you're new, thanks for joining. Um, This is a podcast about my exploration into my ethnic roots, my my immigrant roots, where I come from, how I'm here, why I'm here, uh, and how I've dealt with all that and processed that growing up. Um, it's funny, every time you think you have figured things out about like your upbringing or who you are, you know, every five years you wake up and go, oh, I was way fucking wrong about that. In my 20s, I realized my teen years were just a cloud of just confusion, nonsense, anger, depression, all that stuff. And then my late 20s, I felt differently about my teen years. It was maybe a little bit more fun than I allowed myself to have. I woke up to the realization that I was uh, burying a lot of my um, ethnic you know, uh, heritage and, and identity and pride and all that sort of stuff. In order to fit in, you know, I didn't really have a, an Arab community, a Lebanese community where I live, which I found through only, you know, four or five episodes so far that those things make a difference, you know? I, I've talked to people who grew up with, like, an Indian community or, like, a, a Mexican community, and it really helped, you know, define them. It helped shape who they are and, and gave them some some sense of pride and... I didn't have a lot of that. I had that in in the home, for sure. My parents were always, you know, be proud of who you are, be proud of where we come from. Everything in Lebanon is always better than anything, you know, that we could eat and wear or see and all that sort of stuff. You know, they didn't mean it a lot of the time, but they just wanted to remind us. But um, And now, now I'm in my 30s, and I'm kind of like, you know, you see your parents getting older, and, you know, you, you're starting to become like, in your mid 30s you're like what do i want to hold on to what do i want to reclaim what do i want to figure out and yeah, i think it's better late than never you know it's kind of scary sometimes to to just uh to see what you've kind of put on the back burner you know so to speak or just really kind of hid from people and from yourself and then now to wake up and go i got to do this before it's too late um and this is that effort. This is that effort to have those discussions with other people and learn about myself and learn about them and hopefully share those experiences with anyone willing to listen. So here we are, um, episode five. Before we get into that, um, I'm wrapping up a weekend here, or a week at Lake Tahoe, uh, headlining the improv. Um, a few of you came out, or at least made it, made me aware that you came out so thanks um to anyone else who came to a show appreciate it love you um let's see i'm going home for a little bit and then i'll be in um i'm uh, i'll be in san francisco um headlining the san francisco punchline july 6th 7th and 8th you can get tickets uh on through my website or at the punchlines website um Come to those shows, man. San Francisco rocks. That club is one of the best. I recorded my last album there, 1982, which if you haven't heard that, get it somewhere. Uh, Spotify, Apple Music. You can buy it on iTunes if you want to give me some money. You can buy it on vinyl if you want to give me some money and have a record. Hot Pink Vinyl, limited edition. Get your hands on it. Also, my first one. Uh, there's still some copies of those, too. So um, go ahead and do that. All that's at nickyusef.com. Um and then uh, later in July, um, I'll be at the Tempe Improv with Bobby Lee. And oh, you know what? I completely blanked on this. Um, I'll be in New York again, uh, New York City, June 11th through the 19th. Um, I'll just be doing a bunch of spots around at the clubs around town. So I will post those as I kind of have them. They they kind of roll in as. As I go along, it kind of works like Los Angeles, where you just leave avails, you know, and then you kind of get spots as the days or as the, that week shows up. So um, I don't have specifics right now, but I'll be at the stand. I'll be at New York Comedy Club, and then um, I'll post specific nights and whatever other shows come up. So if you live in New York, come out to a show, say hi, um, and there we go. So this episode... Um, friend of mine, Raj Desai. We've known each other for many, many years. Um, 
this easily one of the most in-depth conversations we've ever had as friends. Um, he just got back from uh, writing for the White House Correspondents' Dinner that Hassan Minaj from The Daily Show hosted, uh, who I hope to get on the show, too. Uh, he was busy last time I was in New York, but maybe this time, maybe when I'm out there, I'll be able to grab him for a quick hour. Um, but uh, Raj wrote on the Correspondence Center, and if you haven't seen it, Google it. It's on It's on YouTube. It's great. Hassan does a great job. There's some great jokes in there. Raj decides responsible for a bunch of them. Uh, so we talked about that experience, you know, having basically three, you know, Indian dudes like the uh, ethnic guys that are not your you know run-of-the-mill white christian males writing for a show like this you know um so he talks about that experience and then we get into um you know a few different conversations one of which was an interesting one about his view on every time he sees you know an indian person on tv it's still like amazing to him that that they've been you know sort of like accepted and put on tv and in film and you know, in Western media, even though it's happening more, he grew up with the idea that that's not something you see, you know, and that's a weird thing. You know, if you're not from a background like that to sit there and go to see some, you know, something that you're a part of, like not represented really in any way growing up, you know, now more so for sure. You know, these younger kids are I'm going to have it a lot different and, 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 and in a great way. You know, they'll grow up seeing a little bit of everything on TV and on the internet. And, you know, media is just, there's so many different subgenres now that you can kind of see whatever you want, you know. Maybe not in, in movies and on, you know, major TV programs yet, but we're getting there. Um, so, yeah, he talks about the, what that was like and uh, his upbringing in Dallas, Texas, which I was, I didn't know that. I thought he grew up on the East Coast somewhere or something. So we get into, you know, was there an Indian community there? What was that like? Uh, what was your home life, school, all that sort of stuff? How'd you navigate the waters in, in, in the, the middle of Texas being in, an Indian kid? Um, and then some adulthood stuff, you know, he, he was a lawyer for a while. Uh, he's very political. We avoid politics for the most part. So, you know, you're, this is not going to turn into like, and another thing about the president, blah, blah, blah. So uh, very good, very thoughtful conversation. Raj is a very smart guy, very funny guy. Um, and you can connect with him on um, online if you want to tell him how, uh, how you felt about the episode. And um, definitely find him online and read his... Uh, Read some of the writing he's done. He has a, a Tumblr, Raj Desai, R A J, uh, and then last name D E S A I. Um, you can find his Tumblr and links to his um, his essays and things he's written for uh, the New Yorker. He has a great piece on uh, dating, um, and then he I think just published something with Mick Sweeney's too, which is a great satirical. Uh, humor site um so check that out follow him on twitter at raj desai and uh let him know what you think and let me know what you think of these episodes um any questions comments thoughts concerns contact at nickyousef.com or nickamericapod at gmail.com um and uh and yeah let's talk uh tell me who you'd like to here on here, tell me what subjects you'd like to hear discussed. You know all that stuff. Let's uh, let's trade notes, make this podcast good and better by the day. So uh, I'm gonna continue enjoying this sweet ass view of Lake Tahoe on my last day here, and then I'll be back in Los Angeles, um, May 24th. My next new material show at the Comedy Store, uh, 8 p.m. Really good lineup: Sean Patton, Neil Brennan. Um, Graham Elwood, um, JF Harris, uh, myself, and a few others. I'm blanking on the names. And, uh, and I'll be doing some spots around town at the Comedy Store and elsewhere. So uh, we'll see you out there. See you in New York very soon. And see you next week on Nick America. Okay, so welcome back to California. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, how was writing for the correspondence center i feel like it got a like way more press than usual right it seemed that way i mean we all were 
thought that it could either be a big yawn, like no one would pay attention because mm-hmm. the president wasn't there or because of Sam B's thing. Yeah. Um, but I think because he wasn't there, it actually caught a lot more attention. Yeah. And then the other aspect that, you know, I thought about hindsight was, well, you are talking to a room full of people who cover the news. <laughs> so right. they might be interested yeah, in what yeah. just transpired. But, you know, like, who, do you do you know who, who hosted it last year? Um, I was in the same position, yeah. And wait. I'm like a, you're a political junkie, I'm a political junkie, I'm who? a comedy head, you're a comedy head. Wait, wait, wait. So it can be a big yawn a lot of years. Was it, it wasn't Trevor Noah, was it? No. Shit, who did host it last year? It was, it was Larry Wilmore. But I didn't know until I looked in. That's what I'm saying. Oh, is like a yeah. lot of times it is. It does just kind of go into the ether, and you, yeah, you, know, you read some of the jokes in an article, and you, hey, those are funny, and you move on. So this one, that's kind of what I think we actually all assumed it would be more like, and it actually, yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's because Trump wasn't there, it caught a lot more attention, and he held that rival rally that drew that's attention right. to it. So I think yeah, and it was also the first one about uh, in his presidency. So there yeah. or not, I think people were going to be like, well what's this person going to say? say. Yeah. And then, because you know you would tune into Trump's yeah. reaction the next yeah. day if he had, or whatever his tweets were going to be about it. <clears throat> um, yeah, that is interesting. And I guess, like, how much would they make fun of him, you know? Yeah, I think it was also, like, what was the tone going to be and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And and I have to say, like, um, you know, Hassan, he, uh, he worked incredibly, I mean, really insanely hard but he also played it really smart like he turned down all the jokes about like hair and tiny hands and yep good there were none all of those, that yeah. st- none of that stuff he was like i don't want that stuff he didn't want anything about trump being attracted to his daughter right, 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 <laughs> any right, of the yeah. stuff that com- even comedy writers think is funny about yeah. trump he just he was like let's talk about him and what he's doing and yeah what we think about him not about i mean those jokes know. have also been like done to death they have know? they have <clears throat> i mean you know, and and so that that's part of it, I'm sure, is why. But he wanted something cohesive that yeah. kind of told a story and brought himself into it. And he he did. Yeah. I don't think he did a ton of the brick and mortar like joke writing, but mm. the themes were all his, and, and he okay. was really. So it was his decision to go after the media. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. was my favorite part. I think it was. It was. It. I mean, it was. I. I. I that's great. I mean, I, I think it was a great part of it, and I think he. Yeah, he, he, him and maybe the head writer too. Uh, I, I don't know exactly who came with. I was just sort of told, told this is this is the theme we're going for. Write jokes about it, you know, yeah. for various sections. So I guess I don't know who exactly, but he had to have had a lot to do with it. Who's the head writer? Uh, Prashant Vengatek. He um, writes for Bill Nye, Saves okay. the World, and okay. he's one of the writers on that. So, um, and uh, he's a stand-up as well, but okay. doesn't do a ton anymore. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, they they kind of came up with a great great theme. Yeah, and uh, did they use a bunch of Daily Show writers? Like I would did. assume they'd bring. They did. It was mostly <coughs> mostly Daily Show people. Okay, I think ultimately, yeah, yeah. And then um, any other like because uh, I imagine like big names that kind of pop in and be like, "Hey, I'm going to help out." I that I may not be able to talk about okay. just because I get no one told me I could, but there were big names who who lent a hand lent a hand kind of to thing. like okay. um you know we like reviewed the script overall and said you okay know, fashion it this because that is such yeah. a big deal thing you know like you wonder like if they just like pass it by as many people as possible i think he did i think he okay. passed it by and you know you know without giving too much weight you know he obviously he was he's yeah. on the daily show so there's a lot of people from that world who have done this before so yeah pretty much everybody who'd done it before from that yeah world that's cool is it true that there were a lot of people that turned it down do you know anything about that i definitely think it's yeah true yeah 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 it's a pretty because it wasn't surprising i think when he said that or other people said you know a lot of people didn't want to do this like i could see why they wouldn't but i could also see why you would want to i guess so i mean look at the way it turned out yeah, I mean, the name I saw in the news and like the New York Times was James Corden turned it down. You know, I don't know. They said rumors right. have turned it down. So he didn't seem like he would. That would be a good fit for. Him, I, I don't, don't know that it would or wouldn't. I would think that he could. It seemed like that would have been all hands and hair jokes. You, like, that's you know, what he's a lot I would goofier. think. Yeah, but he has. 
I'll be honest, I don't watch a ton of James Corden's show, but he does. He's not shy about saying he does not like Donald Trump. Yeah. You know, so I kind of was a little surprised he turned it down. Maybe it was just like, I'm too busy. I have family. You know, it could be a million reasons. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. I got to do these car the karaoke nature. videos. Yeah. I got way too many. Like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, can I do the correspondence gig from a car? <laughs> from a car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can it all be one karaoke song? Yeah. About. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then. And I do think it was maybe that uh, Samantha Bee's rival thing that maybe threw some oh, people Oh, yeah, off yeah, which too. that's where all the buzz was. Seemed like it. And they had, they had. I mean, the thing I thought that we all kind of thought was like, if you followed it, Samantha Bee's event had a ton of celebrities. Wow. And the White House Correspondents Dinner had Matthew Modine and Dean Cain. And that was it. That's hilarious. So... That's you know, really Will Ferrell was on, you know, Samantha, you know, like a lot of big people were on it and yeah. showed up to it. So we kind of thought that's what people would, you know, naturally that's what people right. gravitate to. And I think it did fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it didn't do well. I, I heard, I, yeah, know. I heard it did, but it didn't get nearly the coverage. It didn't seem to. But maybe because all the media were like, well, we're going to report on the thing we attended. And that could be it too. <laughs> that know? could be it too. And then, and I was surprised by how many I mean, have you ever watched one of those live? I, I never have. I'll the correspondence? Yeah. I've seen a couple over the years. Yeah, like that live. Was like, but like back when I had cable and cable, regular yeah. TV, yeah. so it's been a long time. But I was shocked how many people <sighs> watched it live and tweeted about it and blah, 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 because yeah. I was like, boy, that sounds like a great Saturday. I mean, <laughs> like you have nothing better to do on a right. Saturday night. Yeah. And like, I was, I was kind of shocked, you know. That's funny. And like I said, I'm you and I are both comedy heads and, pro, yeah. you know, political junkies ain't wet yet i would probably never tune into it live you know yeah i don't think i mean unless like i was you know sitting somewhere writing or something and then like you know how they do the live feeds on twitter of certain things yeah yeah and because that's one thing a lot of comics do or kind of did more a few years ago is when something would be on they'd live tweet it yeah yeah so i would do it maybe for that yeah because i found myself over the years watching shit like the golden globes and just to do that yeah just to you know get some fucking jokes in followers but yeah i would never just do that for the fuck of it right i mean so i was uh but i think maybe people like in the last year are just becoming more politically engaged so maybe they were like, I'm going to watch the Correspondence Dinner because I'm watching more of the news in general and reading the paper more yeah, and yeah. whatever it is. So, so And I will knows? say this. I mean, I I can speak a little bit about it, which is that, you know, he is like, he is, you know, Muslim. So that probably meant if you're a Muslim American, you're probably just interested. What is this yeah. guy going to do and say? And he is, you know, South Asian. I was immediately interested in the fact that he got it, you know. Yeah. I, mean, I know him a little personally, obviously, but... You know, just it's the kind of thing where, you know, if you're from certain communities and someone, it's it's not that often they get high profile stuff. That's true. So those people all pay. It was news in India, you know, big yeah. news. Wow. And um, which isn't shocking if you're, you know, because it's, you know, it is a a, a relatively well known gig, right? Yeah. In, in a in the given year. Yeah. So it was it was. I wouldn't be shocked if a lot of the views came on, say, on the YouTube, whatever the view count is, yeah. if a lot of them came from outside the country. Yeah, especially if it has 900 million views or whatever at some point. Is, You're yeah. like, a lot of Americans watch that yeah, twice. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. I wouldn't be shocked because it was, it was significant to, yeah. to people. from. So was it know. like exciting for you to like do it because of the like personal connection? You know, it was at first I was ex- I was excited about it for that for a little bit, but I kind of thought of it as um <clears throat> you know, a little bit of like a run of the mill or standard joke writing, okay. you know, about whatever the subject which is happens to be Donald Trump or CNN or whatever. And then as as it got closer and closer, I started to see that, you know, frankly even my parents were were pretty interested in it and proud of it that I was working on something that was a little high profile for yeah. you know, an Indian American, which I am as well. And I did feel a very, I can tell you I cared a lot about it because I was so nervous before it happened and I wasn't relieved until the reviews. Yeah. It took a couple of days to feel a sense of relief wow. because even when it was done, I was like, well, what's happening online? You know, <laughs> right, right, right. right. There's no satisfaction nowadays yeah. with it. Cause we did think it went pretty well in the room, but then, it, then the question is how are people receiving it out there? And do people even care? You know, was the another right. question. Did the media, uh, that whole chunk on the media was that well received in the room, or were, did, did 
did sections go like the, the, did the USA Today people go like, well, we don't like this part. Well, you know what? It's I I feel like, I mean, I feel like it was mostly. If you got a third of the room to laugh, mm. maybe it's similar to some clubs or with Sam, you know, it's good enough. It plays okay. well enough on, on TV, but people yeah. definitely clammed up about laughing at other media organizations because right. they're all work together. They're yeah. all in this together, you know, and, and I think it's a question we ask ourselves quite a bit in the process, which is like, well, if we make fun of, of anything, even if it's a joke about Donald Trump tweeting, is it okay? Would Jake Tapper or someone like that laugh at it? Because then are they showing their lack of impartiality or something? You know what I mean? Right. And then, and I do, th- it's funny you mentioned USA Today because we kind of opened with a couple of, and we kind of thought that was like a topic everybody likes to make fun of, but it it, it was not that was well received as right. I would have thought, just because I think people don't want to laugh at their colleagues to their face and yeah. Yeah. Who knows you know, how that'll be taken the next day at work. Exactly. You know? Or, I, I mean, I did, I, I get where they're coming from, right? Like, you know, um, so I, I do think the stuff that was not about the media did better, for sure. Uh-huh. And the stuff, you know, even the stuff that, where, you know, you know, Huston made fun of himself a little bit, you know, that always, that did really well. And then yeah. when he kind of made fun of missing him, you know, Sean Spicer was an easy time. For whatever sure. reason, they all loved making fun of Sean Spicer, even though they <laughs> yeah. work with him, you know. Yeah. Um, I guess he's just such a funny you know he's just such a what a bizarre thing he's the press secretary you know I know and what he says and what comes out of his mouth so <laughs> yeah maybe that's all it was but um so I I, I do think they kind of did clam up a little uh-huh. during the media stuff you know and and there was a huge groan we made fun it was a joke I wrote actually we made fun of Huffington Post and people groaned and I was like the Huffington Post is like <laughs> It's like, right. it's a reblog of all the work most of you do. They do have some <laughs> original work, yeah. but if you cannot make fun of the Huffington Post, yeah, who can you make fun of? You know, it's That's like, funny. and if you aren't on, on the side of like, of an, not anti Huffington Post, but it's just like, they're literally taking your work Yeah, and you know, aren't you annoyed and we can't make fun of them. And I got this massive groan. The joke was that they are not, in fact, a journalistic organization. Uh-huh. So we were saying some pretty negative things about. Yeah, Huffington I mean, Post. yeah, but, but still, you know, you'd think everybody would be able to. But I guess when you go in and tensions are high, like we got to be careful what yeah, we laugh at. Yeah, then the second you attack anybody, they just go, like, "Ooh, yeah, yeah." You know, and if I could brag not. a little about Hudson, he 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 ran these jokes, you know, sixty plus times. He only had about uh-huh. three weeks run up. That's a lot of sets, you know. Yeah. All at the comedy cellar. So the other concern was the comedy cellar. You know, I don't know if I've I've been in it. I've never done it. Maybe uh-huh. you've done it or been in it. But it's like a you know the comedy store, and you, you know it's like probably a younger audience uh-huh. than who's at the. I can almost guarantee it's a younger audience yeah, yeah, than yeah. who's at the White House court. So that becomes a question too. It's like, well, are they just older and maybe a little more uptight? Are they older and maybe just don't get? references to certain things like right. whatever we had a reference to call of duty or that type of thing you know yeah, yeah, yeah. so that was a concern too was like the the sort of overall mean age and everything so uh-huh. but i think it went about as well as it could go in my opinion yeah. so you know i guess i'm impartial or partial but you know um, that's cool yeah i like that i like the approach that he had like not going after not going for you know cheap shots easy yeah, shots yeah and making like having like a message and a theme and, yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. so but I mean he's kind of that guy, you know, like his stand up is very like thoughtful. It is. You know? It is. And yeah. even his his um uh correspondence pieces on the Daily Show, yeah. you know, like he's they just are. like that's yeah. that's his approach to comedy. Um and it makes him like unique and stuff. Um but that's cool. Was it was it like a v- minority heavy writing staff? Did they like go in that direction or there was he he did you know, make an attempt to do that. Um, yeah, I think ultimately the um, the Daily Show people were were pretty were pretty big part of Prominent it. You know, group, yeah. and as far as I know, none of them were. Minor- there was a couple females, you know, but, okay. but um, as far as I know, there weren't any minorities. Oh, so they were say. the majority of the writing staff. I think so. Ultimately, oh, okay. yeah. I don't know. You know, there was there was definitely multiple 
you know, uh, yeah. South Asian people, me being one of them. And, you know, you got to turn this into a know. daily show writing gig, dude. <laughs> yeah. Come I know. on. If it's right, the, right, right. the staff and you, yeah, like, yeah. that's well, a pretty there, great there accomplishment were... to be like, he basically had the writing staff and you're like, here's how fucking good yeah. my packet is. And like, we need, well, I did the thing is like, I I've known him for a long time personally. Yeah. So it wasn't totally done. Like, you know, right. he did, you know, we did connect and then okay. I ended up doing it. And, and at first I was just going to do it kind of as a friend thing. Like, you know, here I can write some, I think I can do a good job in this. Do you want some jokes? And that's yeah. how it started. And he said, sure. And then he said, why don't you just cool partake, you know, in the whole thing and, and do yeah. it. So, um, sweet. Yeah, it was, uh, it may end up being the thing that I'm most proud of. I've done my entire comedy career, you know, up to right, like today, up till now. And uh-huh. just, it may end up, you know, if I, I mean, this if I is, stay in it for 20 years, it might be the thing I'm most yeah. proud of. And why wouldn't you? I mean, because this will lead to the next thing. I mean, that when you wrote on Triumph, you yeah. know, that I'm sure in some way helped lead to this. Whether I think it, was, it did. I think it yeah. did quite a bit, actually. Yeah. Um, and this will lead to something else. Yeah. In a year, you'll be living in New York writing for The Daily Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows? But I mean, um, I do think, yeah, I think uh, it was very, um, it felt. Cause I don't, I mean, we, you started comedy before me, but the, I, I started in 2005 and the idea that someone who looked like me would host the, I was crazy. You would have talked about it. I said, you're crazy. That'll yeah. never happen. This business doesn't work like that. That's funny. And yeah, I guess Oh five, there weren't really, there I mean, were obviously minority comedians. I mean, well, I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Obviously, but, but I feel like they always just had one of each for the most part. And th- either that thing, or, or you know? like, you know, it just seemed so, you know, I don't know. I guess maybe I'm just out of touch. I was even saying it to, to you know, to Huston and the head writer, Prashant, just kind of like, I find this mind-blowing. And maybe to the two of you, it's just like, yeah, oh, of course. Why wouldn't you expect this? You know, I, I don't know. They're also younger than me. Um, it's a little like, um, I guess I thought a little bit like when o- Obama ran in 2007, some of the older like John Lewis, for instance, a civil rights legend older where yeah. it was just like, you know, ah, it's cute and all, but I'm just going to support Hillary Clinton because the odds of you, it's just not possible, right? Like yeah. a black, you know, <laughs> nominee from a major party. And then eventually of course they endorsed him and everything. Yeah. But, you know, I think maybe I, I, I still lived by, I don't know. I, in show business, I, st- but at the time I thought in 2005, I thought, you know, I'll be lucky to get a writing job and a couple of TV credits. You know, I, I could yeah. never, they're not going to make a show starring an Indian guy. And next thing you know, there's like whatever, you know, Aziz's show and all that. Right. You know. So well, what about I, when his, what about his rise in stand up? Was that kind of like, wow, this is so cool. Or was it surprising or I guess it was a little surprising. I did think it was cool. I did find it surprising, I guess. And I did feel a little like maybe, um, you know, I felt like it was, you know, quote, good for everybody in that community, uh-huh. right? Or, But then at the same time, there's this other theory uh, that goes around about, you know, minorities and stuff in, in any business. It, you know, if, if the door opens to one, then people feel like, well, we did our, we checked off our list. Does that right. make sense? Like the token. Yeah, whatever. a little like maybe. We have one now. I mean, that's d- it. When do you think another black president is going to be possible? I don't know. It could be next time. I don't know. Yeah. And it, there's also other factors like who's the yeah. right candidate and this and that. But yeah. like, you know, it's like actually a Malcolm Gladwell piece about um, about that, about how like, um, and he used the example of a, of a female who was led into like the National Arts Council or something on, in uh. Britain in like 1890 and then another one wasn't let in for like another 50 years. And the, the response when it was, well, how come you don't have it? It was, well, we let her in. Yeah, we did that. You know, yeah. so there is some, maybe there was a little bit, I don't I don't know what I, at the time I just thought, wow, well, people will consider you a comedian if you yeah. aren't, you know, <laughs> You don't majority. have to look like... Yeah, 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 exactly. And I, I guess I thought it was a benefit. I think it has benefited yeah. people of all ki- all types, you know. I think... Um, I mean, that theory I p- feel like maybe would have applied before, like, social media and the internet. 
I think, which unfortunately, I'm that old. I started. Well, I guess MySpace, but which was, was bare. I mean, that was yeah, like yeah. But did, I do think I think your point of like so. Let's say if you're talking about something like um, who Comedy Central would give a special to, there would probably just be one. Yeah, maybe two black guys. Yeah, two women, and maybe one you know of another type of ethnicity yeah, 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 and yeah. that's about it yeah you know and they they did have they did seem to i mean i guess i'm saying something negative about the arguably negative about the industry which is at that time it did seem like they had a you know bucket system or whatever you want to call uh-huh. it where it was like okay we checked off our box for this this and this and uh-huh. the rest goes to you know and, and i'm sure it had to do with what they thought was marketable you know what they thought was yeah. money making it had because the moment it isn't that will change you know the moment it, it it isn't it makes sense to have uh different you know uh, minority groups represented of course they're going to do it financially yeah. you know so i don't think it's anything like inherently racist i think that's just what they, they were used to and what they thought but i did feel like i don't know if you would feel the same way i i felt like i was competing against people who were just like me and that was who i was competing for for one yeah. or two slots it's, at it's, least in stand-up yeah that's how i felt because the fact that like i mean it's sort of implied in like you know the way the programs are structured like the fact that there even are programs like they have we have a diversity program Mm -hmm. so you go all right so now i'm competing against every other arab or indian or black or whatever you are yeah and then there's one slot or two slots yeah and you go okay yeah and then i guess you know there's resentment built by people like before you even show your work they go like it's a diversity hire like that well, is also still, a very you know, yeah could be talented exactly yeah. yeah so i don't know i i the more i th- the more i think about um you know my relationship to showbiz and etc with terms of my ethnicity i guess i I have more negative things to say about it than positive, probably yeah. from what I I feel like. But there's no way to really know, so who knows? Yeah. And then it is hard sometimes to pinpoint overt racism. It's or impossible, yeah. and you rarely hear like we don't want to bring in any Indians. Like you never hear that. Yeah, you're never gonna hear it. You know? And one like so one one thing that's interesting that you may have noticed in terms of even your own like auditioning or whatever is like so Nickelodeon and Disney Channel they're they're really they have a lot of diverse uh-huh. diversity in their um, programming, right? Yeah. Because those kids are growing up in a way more diverse yeah. America, right? So like for Disney or Nick, Nickelodeon, I don't know, or both of them, I've, I've been called in to play like something that had really had nothing to do. The character's name was like Robert or whatever. Yeah. And I was a teacher or whatever. And I was like, this is cool. This yeah. is interesting. You know, and yeah, I do you weren't think, a fucking cab driver. Yeah. You weren't like a, you owned an Indian restaurant. Or, absolutely. Yeah, it's great. So I do think that that, that must that's gonna change it it must be changing and someone like aziz has changed it I yeah mean, he does play like he did play a guy named tom haverford and exactly yeah. and, and even so, in his stand-up there's no accent he's talking no. about hip-hop and yeah he's doing like what any other if you heard just audio you'd be like yeah that's some white kid from yeah. chicago yeah. or or brooklyn or wherever yeah, absolutely and i think that i don't know because in in my i never wore like it's obvious from if you're relatively familiar with any you know culture, you'll know from my first name, yeah, at least the way it's spelled, R A J, that I'm I'm Indian, right? But yeah. I never wore it on my sleeve in my act or anything. It wasn't anything deliberate not to. I, I don't. I, I I'm sure I could spend hours wondering why or talking about it. And well, that's I, what we're I, here to do. I know, and I have, <laughs> I have spent hours wondering yeah. why and thinking about so, it. So okay, let's go into like your like your formative years. I guess did you at any point have issues with your name where you're like I'd rather go by the name Robert or Ron or any other like a lot of kids do that you know what I was uh, mildly lucky because Raj sounds like Roger right so my full name is Rajan R-A-J-A-N yeah and if it was it's not hard for people to say Raj right you know um, non Indian people right so I I was a little lucky in that department Um, I never had I know people who have had plenty of identities but I never I I wouldn't say I personally did I think that um, I grew up in, um, moved all over when I was really young. I don't really remember it, but I basically spent my life in Tennessee and Texas. What part of Tennessee? 
Uh, outside Chattanooga, a town called okay. Hickson. I mean, that was like two years of my life that I remember. I was like six and seven, okay. so I remember pretty well. And then after that, it was all Texas and very... Two so unlikely places that I, I would never think... Like, what led your family to go, we're going to Chattanooga, Tennessee? Well, it was just where my dad got a job. He's an engineer, and okay. he got a job there. Same thing with uh, with Texas. So, And where did the, where did your parents grow up? Uh, both both grew up in India, in right. rural India as well, not even like urban India. And um, yeah. so they grew up there, and then uh, my dad came here in 63. Yeah to go to college to get a master's degree um and then he went back to india got married and the plan was for you know my mom to join him and have you know start a family here and then possibly move back to india was he not into the american chicks in college my dad well i mean there was no there was no dating for that general i mean he was going to get married to whoever his parents wanted him to basically. Wait, and really? Him. Even uh, like yeah. even moving to the States and like with the assumption, like I'm going to live here. It was like, okay, you can go to college in America, but you got to come back here and get married. Cause we still control that aspect of your life. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was that. I mean, some of this stuff isn't even verbal. It's just like expected, you know? And, wow, okay. but I think if my dad had met, I mean, I do know people of my dad's generation who met somebody off even not even Indian, you know, and, yeah. and married them and it was fine, you know? Yeah. Um, maybe if he had met someone, I think that the idea of dating for my, my dad, I'm sure was just not something that crossed his mind. I know it sounds mind blowing. No, no, not at people, all. My, my parents were it, the same way. Um, they, there wasn't the concept of dating as just we know it. Exactly. Didn't, didn't exist. Didn't exist. And, and even that affected me some because mm. I, I I didn't date until I was in college. I mean, a very late bloomer in general. Yeah. In that aspect. And um, how old are you now? I'm uh, forty. Oh wow! Wouldn't have guessed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I guess that's good. Yeah, it definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. So he went back. So it was basically an arranged marriage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And and are they still together now? They are. I mean, what I always say about arranged marriage is that. You know, a, a, a good chunk of them work out really well. I've, I've read, I read a study about that. Yeah, and I was found it kind of fascinating because your average relationship doesn't last. Half the people, at least in America, get divorced. Oh yeah, no one yeah. can make anything work, and so many arranged marriages work. And there is, by large, two almost strangers. Right, they're vetted by the families. I, I, I mean, I practically know, right? strangers. I would say this is like 1960s India. I, I would say India now. The culture is to give people a chance to know each other a little bit. It's more right. like setting someone up. You know, like your yeah. mom would say, "Oh, I know this person." And your parents are basically Tinder. They're like, hey. Ex- essentially, yeah, yeah. It's essentially, like our yeah. radius location service yeah. has yeah. detected yeah. Yeah. This, <laughs> this girl. So, I mean, that is more what it, it's more quote unquote reasonable now yeah. but back then it was uh, this is yeah here's your here's your future can I throw out a name for the Indian dating service um I there is one is it called Tindori because it should be no yeah, yeah, okay, yeah that's my yeah. that's my suggestion yeah <laughs> okay yeah um that wouldn't that wouldn't that wouldn't be bad I'm sure I gotta yeah. sell that to somebody <laughs> um or someone's gonna steal it now and start it <laughs> um okay so um so they would basically set set it up, and then you would just go meet your dad. Just basically met your mom, like yeah. And I, then I think you know, in like the eighties or ninety, it was more like, hey, these are three or four choices. Which one do you prefer? Okay. And then now it's more like. And was that considered like crazy progressive? I think so. That? It's okay. all. It's all. It's all like baby steps to the point where. You know, in my family, people have married outside our, our race, and it's right. no big deal anymore. There was a okay. time when it was, and, yeah, you know, the, the truth is, is that people will always choose, I mean, young people in India want choice, just yeah. like you do or I do, right? So people, I don't know anybody who, that I that I know plenty of Indian people born here who are like, you know what? I just want to marry whoever my dad's. Nobody <laughs> right. said that, right? Yeah. People always move towards choice. And I think yeah. our parents, my parents, and they get that because no one would choose to be told 
that 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 yeah that thing. no one would but choose no choice exactly <laughs> nobody would right like, especially it's part of the culture here like the identity of the average american is you're an individual you do what you want and yeah. that's what we you know urge everyone to yeah do. go yeah. get what's yours do it your own way no yeah and i think that that's a big friction with um indian family the, the generation above mine is more like you know we're a family unit everything is right. done to advance the family unit yeah, and here you're taught to you're be out the door at 18. Yeah. Fuck you. You're not yeah. a part of the family yeah. except for the last name. And, and this this will like when I was 16, I worked at Pizza Hut. I just gave the money to my parents. Believe it or not. Yeah, it's not like they needed the money. That's just how. It and was. I told my friends, and they looked at me like I was from outer space. And I was <laughs> like, "Well, no, that's just what we do. I don't know. It just goes to the family income." And I didn't think anything of it until I was. Realized. Did you get any of it back? Like, Dad, I made a hundred dollars this week, and he's like, "Here's 20. Well, no, I mean, he he also bought me like everything yeah clothes and all whatever you know it was just like yeah this just goes so did your friends in any way like sort of convince you to like try and get that money back or were you just like no 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 that's the way it is i don't want to hear i'm not there's no discussion i think that uh they didn't convince no they were just like what a bizarre thing why don't you want to keep it why don't you want to spend it and i was like well no i guess it'll just go to it's not wasn't a ton of money but it would go to college or whatever you know or whatever was was needed. I didn't think anything of it, you know. Um, it's it's uh, it does sound crazy when I say it. I would not expect yeah. my kids to do that if they worked a summer job or something. You yeah. Know, so yeah, it's their money for whatever yeah. the hell. And, yeah, yeah. Right. I and what you kind of like, in a way, encourage. It's like, yeah, you're earning money. You know what yeah. that process is like, and yeah. the value of it, and yeah, probably maybe be wiser about spending it because it wasn't handed to you by your dad or no. Yeah, my dad whatever. was actually really one of the things he did. For that was the smartest thing he did was he said, get a job in food service because you'll, mm. you'll realize how much it sucks and you'll want, want to do it. And he was right. right. That's, <laughs> that is actually very smart. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. So, cause I wanted to work at, and my dream was to work at Blockbuster Video and get free my rentals. My dream. I yeah. mean, when I was 16. Of course. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's funny on multiple levels now because there's just, when was the last time you no, saw video stores, right? But, I knew one guy that worked there. He said he got seven free rentals a week. I was like, that's well a night. <laughs> you could watch seven movies Damn. for free. <laughs> that's actually now 16-year-old me's dream, too. Yeah. yeah. There's seven fucking yeah. rentals a week, including so, video games? Yeah, probably. Jesus. Yeah. So I was like, that's what I wanted. But I think those... I mean, off subject, but I think it was actually pretty competitive to get a gig at Black. I would, for I would that think reason, so. I think, yeah. Because it was like... I would think so. I guess a cool job for a 16 year old. Yeah. Like work. yeah, working somewhere with that rents movies and video games or when there were arcades yeah, working at yeah, an arcade was yeah. one. Um, yeah. There were jobs where you're like, cause it would make you in a way more popular even at school. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's like, dude, let's be nice to him. We'll yeah. get the new resident evil game. That and you know, you're probably not cleaning toilets and taking out trash. That's a big you one. You probably too. are to some degree, but not the same as yeah, Pizza not Hut. as like a McDonald's. Yeah, where, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're how many? What was the Indian population like, or what was the minority population like in in uh, where was it? Arlington, Arlington, Texas is where I grew up. Yeah, it's uh, if you don't know it, it's uh, where the Dallas Cowboys play, the Texas Rangers play. So yeah. it's like a s- pretty large suburb now mm-hmm. of the Dallas Fort Worth area. Okay. Basically, and back then, so when I was growing up, it was, I would say there were some Latinos, some, some small percentage, maybe if I was to say my high school class was about 650 people. That's kind say, of small for a high school, right? Or no? Um, it's probably on the, my my graduating class, rather. Okay. So the high school itself was, was large. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah, got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, there were three Indian, there were two Indian people, <laughs> me and one other guy. Yeah. Maybe like 20 Vietnam. There, there's a now a very sizable Vietnamese American population in Arlington. Uh-huh. At the time, it was starting to get that way. And then maybe like 30 black people and like okay. 30 Latinos. So maybe 100 tops out of 650 okay. were, were not white. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. people were familiar with minorities. Yeah. Somewhat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I guess Indian Indian kids were very low. There were only two of us, you know, yeah. in my graduating class. So, um, so it was definitely. I think the more I think about it, it was a huge that growing up that way was probably very impactful on me, you know, in, in yeah. so many ways. What was and, like if if you could think of like one of the big things that kind of sticks out as like wow, if I didn't grow up in Arlington, Texas, I wouldn't be like this or that or 
or I wish I had more access to. Because if there was an Indian community, maybe that would have. Who knows what that would have done? They brought you closer to the to your roots and that kind of thing. Because that cultural identity thing. What the people I've talked to that grew up somewhere with a good whatever it is population or more tied to their roots, more proud, you know, that they speak the language better, yeah. all that sort of stuff. I think that's very true. So I think, I think for me, you know, one thing it probably made me was a lot more, you know, it's a term, you know, Indian people use is like more Westernized, more Americanized, right? Just because more whitewashed, more whitewashed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I don't love to say it, but probably some people would say I'm a very white Indian yeah. person. I get that about about yourself. Being yeah. And I don't know what to make of it because it's not like white people think I'm white. Yeah. Isn't you know? it a weird place to be where like, and I have, yeah. for me, I'm, I look, I can pass for a lot of different things. You could. Yeah. And some people yeah. e- even assume cause, cause I'm so like whitewashed yeah, 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 yeah. or whatever the term is that yeah. I don't, there's something weird about that term for me, but, um, like the way I dress, I have no accent mm-hmm. and like, you know, I'm, Fair skinned if it's not Very the summer, skin, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so some people just think I'm fucking white, yeah. Especially if they don't know my last name, yeah, and then it's yeah. sort of like the shock to them. And I go, yeah, but in my head, I'm not. A lot of the time, when I go visit my family, I'm not. I'm not at all. I mean, I, I guess I once had a conversation with um, with someone where I was trying to describe. It. I was like, it's so, it's so in my DNA that mm. it's almost even hard to it's almost part of everything I do that I, 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 it's like, um, innate and I can't even explain it, you know, um, how, what kind of influence growing up in an Indian household was, right. Yeah. It's just so, well, like would religion be ingrained. Oh, really? We were not that religious. We are Hindu, right. you know, so, you know, we were not that religious. My dad is a scientist. I think he yeah, wouldn't come out and say it, but he probably basically thinks religion is stupid, yeah. you know, um, so we were not that, what about your mom? What did she do? She, uh, she worked as a, uh, sort of a medical tech. She worked for a, a pathology labs. It's a job okay. called cytotechnologist. My dad is a chemical engineer. Mm. So and science won out in yeah, the household. Pretty yeah. Much. Okay. Yeah. And it's good. You know, but my grandparents were very religious and, and I don't eat meat. It's not necessarily <clears throat> totally religious, more cultural, I would say almost, but, uh-huh. um, so I do think uh so just in general culturally Indians don't eat. Well, uh so we're so one thing I'd say that's that's totally fine if if people don't get but like it's a India is a little like I mean Mexico is like this a lot of you know it was a bunch of cultures forced together by the British right. empire. So our culture the Desais um we're from a state and a sort of a group of people called Gujaratis uh-huh. from a state called Gujarat. So like Patel, that P A T E, a lot of people know that last name. Yeah. That, that's a Gujarati last name. Uh-huh. Desai is a lot of Mehta's M E H T A. Those people tend not to have eaten meat for centuries. Wow. That, that particular group. Beef is a very common one that, that Hindus don't eat. Right. But, but, um, but vegetarian is very common across the, across the whole country. Okay. But I think what, what sometimes the people don't get, even like, like, um, People don't always get that it's uh, it's not a monolithic culture. It's actually a lot of different cultures that were, again, like kind of shoved yeah, together. Yeah. That is becoming more monolithic, just like America is because of you know national TV, you know sure. TV and all this kind of culture oh. that you know, is pervading everybody. But um, but my parents grew up pretty isolated from 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 uh, large cities, you know. So they 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 did retain a lot more of that culture. Yeah. Um, and you know, I do think, uh, so yeah, I think it had a, a big effect on me. I haven't totally unpacked it all I, I, growing up there and, and what that meant, but was what, I mean, somewhere like Texas, I mean, like I'm so, you know, a part of you surprised like meat isn't on the flag. You know it, I, mean? I mean, it was definitely, and like, I, and it's it, fucking everywhere. Like, right. was I mean, it I, you hard know, and for I, you? <laughs> well, I think my, to my parents' credit somewhat, they said, once I was like a little older, they said, do whatever you want. And I did eat meat, you know, basically, you know, what and was I the think first some thing of you it, did? where'd you go? What'd you do? Uh, hamburger, I think. And okay. I think good choice. a lot of it, some of it probably was a little bit of, uh, well, I don't want to have to draw it. I get tired of answering questions about yeah. it, you know, and especially when it's in LA, you tell people vegetarian, it's like. 
who is, you know, not who isn't, but it's yeah. very, no one asks you that much about it or looks at you skeptically. Yeah. But in, if anything, or are they just like, oh God, another yeah, one. Yeah, they roll their eyes, right? So many of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, but in, in in that at that time, in you know, if you said it, it was like some people took it like offensive, almost like yeah. you know what you mean. So it just was easier to do it, almost. Uh-huh. Um, so and, I guess that'd be a way it sort of like because if you grew up out here, the push to like do something, so you're just like leave me alone. Yeah, I wouldn't have, you know. When I had no like solidarity either, say yeah. in my community of like, you know, whatever. If there were fifty Indian kids at my high school, maybe uh-huh. I could feel more like, oh yeah, you know, we we could, I could not do that. Yeah. But they'd be like, back um, off and throw a potato. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I do think it was like, um, I, I always wonder about it. What what effect it had on me? I mean, you can tell I speak very formally, right? I, mm. If you heard my voice. But I, I do think that a lot of young Indian men, Indian American men in particular, basically choose on some level to be a white Indian person or a black Indian person. Oh, really? <laughs> on some level. I think a lot of East Asian young men do it too. Yeah. Where yeah, they, I guess they do. They become huge hip hop fans. They, they right. maybe take on an accent that isn't their natural accent. Yeah. And then there's some of us who just go, well... I guess I'll just sound like a newscaster, you know, or whatever, you know, <laughs> right, right, and right, right. I guess I took that route. Yeah. Yeah. Like early on, or did you have a phase in high school where you're like, I'm getting in a gangster rap. Fuck no, this shit. I mean, I do. I am a somewhat of a rap fan, but I, maybe similar to you, I was, I was interested in rock and roll. From yeah. I guess that's, age. that's yeah. a Texas thing too. Yeah. 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 I was, are you a country in, music guy? I actually am now. I was not growing up. Yeah. Well, and then you did you come back around to it because you're like those are more my roots are in some one way or another. I think in some ways, yeah. I mean, because my high school, I would say a solid third of people in my graduating class wore boots and cowboy had a lot of trucks. You know, very <laughs> into that That's culture. Awesome. Went to rodeos, and what I would say about those, uh, I do think, I would love to say it is that like. So a small percentage of those people were not nice to me. Maybe a little closed minded. But the vast majority of people you might consider quote unquote red were so nice to me, very welcoming, very good yeah. people. And at, I think at the time, if you'd asked me, I would have thought those people were maybe a little, you know, whatever, backwards or a hick like. Uh-huh. Or and now I look back, I think, oh, those people were actually really nice people for the yeah. most part and treated me very quite well. And so were so, they? Was there just like a lot of curiosity and maybe just jokes that were made and that sort of thing? That maybe when you I were would younger. always say there was very. Li- I w- that's funny you use the word curiosity. I would say there was almost none. People just really? act like you're like wallpaper. I think uh, the thing about being maybe you feel this way. I've heard it put this way, which is like you feel like you're invisible uh-huh. and very, and you stick out like a sore thumb at the same time, based okay. on being a very small minority at a you know during your formative years, you uh-huh. know. So I did feel that way. I think that... So there was no... Cur- it was there were one some of those, like, people, for sure, who were. A handful. I would say the kind of more studious, nerdy types were interested in... Yeah. You know, in, in our culture and our food and that type of thing and, and where I grew up and what going to India was like, you know. Right. Uh, a lot of the teachers were actually... They're also adults, though, and maybe yeah. a little more. But most of the kids were, you know, very uninterested, which is totally okay. It's almost better than... You know, yeah. being, uh, I guess, disinterested or like upset with you for being different. They're like, why are you here? Like, I mean, there was definitely some, there was definitely some, you know, some bullying, some racism. I think it probably prepared me for stand up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what helps is like, you're not, you're not from a place that's associated with any sort of like, terrorism or evil like you know i hate to say hinduism doesn't have that no it doesn't and And the country doesn't have a bad reputation yeah and i do think like i do think as time has gone on and um my parents came here very early in the indian immigration movement you know I, i think that there's a lot more positive connotation to being indian american than a lot of other yeah groups um you know especially compared to, to, you know, Muslim Americans, obviously, or Arab Americans, you know, it it just has a way more positive connotation. And sometimes it's as simple as like, oh my God, I love the, the saris, you know, or I love the food, you know, and it's like, oh yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it has gotten way less like, um, out of this world, foreign Mm -hmm. and way more normalized 
Yeah. You know, for probably somewhat to do with media and probably somewhat to sure. do with um I, people just you know they they know more people like that they interact with them and yeah i get you got to think like we were talking about earlier like the younger generations are they have access to those things like on their computer screens at a much younger age you know like you could look up so much information about you know the the indian kid at your school and the food they eat and find actually go find a place like Oh, there's a place I can go try this food or yeah. experience, you know, this art exhibit at a museum or something yeah. like that. No, absolutely. I'll tell you something. In my hometown, there was no Indian restaurants and we used to have to go to Dallas, which is like, you know, a pretty large city. There was one Indian restaurant. This is like in the eighties. Wow. Just one? Just one. And we would go and it would be all Indian people. And I yeah. went recently with my parents to one in Arlington, Texas, which is... You know, again, not a super large city, but then there's all, there's first of all there's like four choices of restaurants. Cool. We went. I went to one, and it was mostly white people in Dallas Cowboys gear. I was just shocked. That's hilarious. You know, in a pleasant way. You know, yeah. I just was. That's awesome. Un could not believe it. Was you the know? one in Dallas when you were growing up? Was it good? It was pretty good, actually. What I say in general is is the ones that were started you know, 30, 40 years ago, whatever, were usually by someone who had an inclination to cook, right? Yeah. And now Indian food is sort of a thing people eat and it's trendy or whatever. Yeah, so let's make money and sacrifice. And a lot of it is bad. I, I won't go to most Indian restaurants, yeah. to be honest. I'm like that with like Middle Eastern food. Right, A yeah. lot of it, I'm like, don't get it. People are like, try this hummus. I'm like, eh, it's not yeah. going to be. Yeah, that's what I think. Most of it's pretty bad, yeah. to be honest. So I, I would never go to a buffet either. Have you ever been to India's restaurant here in... In like Los Feliz Silver Lake, it's not like we're for Fountain meets Sunset. I might have. I say the one in LA I kind of like is Samosa House, which is a little. Is that a La Brea? There's one in Culver City and there's one in Silver Lake, actually. In Silver but Lake. They don't make. The other thing about India is that the cuisine is um, different all over. Okay. So the one. When people think of quote unquote Indian food as like naan and sag paneer and these types of food. Sure, yeah. That's all North Indian. And it is it is the tastiest of all the Indian food. Okay. Um and then the other kind that's more common in America is South Indian food, which is you know, dosa. Maybe you've heard of that. Yeah. Or, um, that's the other kind that's probably the second best type okay. of Indian food. But the kind my parent, you know, we ate was was Gujarati food, and that was very, very What's vegetable heavy right. and lentils and that type of thing, and no meat. You know. Yeah. Um, it's uh, I guess maybe I'm not doing my culture proud. It's not. It's not the most tasty of the Indian. Food. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, you grew up eating it. You're at least grew up eating it every day. And then my, at some point, my parent, my mom was like, "Oh, we you can get some. You, if you want some you pizza. Can eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat whatever you want." Was yeah. that like off limits, or or how was that as far as like eating fast food and that kind of shit? As long as it was vegetarian, would they ever eat out ever? Yeah, they we they ate a lot. And actually, I mean, uh, my parents eat meat now. Oh, cool. Yeah, okay. they 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 kind of change my brother is a huge foodie in general or whatever yeah. so he eats all kinds of stuff so it's actually um a, unfortunately kind of um well i guess for my view unfortunately it's dying a bit in my extended family eating uh, uh being non you know, being a vegetarian yeah um my i guess i'm not really that offended but i don't really care <laughs> i guess right. it's a choice for me but uh but yeah, I think beef is the main one that you have to kind of avoid, avoid and watch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's cool to hear that you were like largely like accepted and not treated really like as an outsider in school. Because that's another thing, like that. Because I have these 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 um stereotypes too that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. You know, where I put them on other parts of the country and people were my assumption. I remember when I was first starting to travel and do comedy in mm. parts of the South or the Midwest or something, I had the assumption that like there were not a lot of minorities and if there were, they were like, you know, lived in other parts of the city mm. and they were treated differently. Like yeah. there was a stereotype about white people and white parts of the country that I held on to. Sure. Cause yeah. I didn't know better. I had not been there. Yeah. I had not met someone who yeah. was yeah. from fucking wherever, Tennessee or Alabama. Yeah. And then when I started going to these places and I was like, man, I feel bad that I ever thought this way. Yeah, That's interesting. Yeah. At least in the bigger cities, you know, Yeah, I I've never been to like, you know, outskirts of some of these towns where you know it's small towns of a hundred fucking white rednecks that yeah yeah these these stereotypes have to come from somewhere 
No, I mean, look, I mean, you know, I, we definitely had, I mean, I had some stuff that happened to me in junior high that, you know, I wouldn't even want to talk about. It was pretty, pretty really? brutal. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then some other stuff was more light, just racial slurs, that type of thing. Yeah. So it did happen for sure. But I just like to look back at least for the sake of work and think, you know, 90% of people at the very least, they were like, well, who cares? You right. Know, yeah. There was nothing negative, you know? Yeah. Um, so I yeah, do I think th- it's important because when you're young, when I was younger, totally. I held on to the handful of things that were bad that had, and maybe right. thought this is representative of this entire group and it's not, yeah. you know, but so those stereotypes totally come from somewhere. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they do. But I was like, um, I was surprised at how, how, how big of a, a place it occupied in my head before I'd gone to these parts yeah, of the country, yeah. you know? I'd go and maybe again it's I don't look that like that much of a minority but in certain parts of the country people can tell I'm not white right and they'll ask you know but by and large I was like you know I was fucking wrong and happy to be wrong I was like you know I've because there's parts of the country I'm like I've always wanted to go to and I had this stupid fear in my head that I was going to be looked at differently or like treated differently and you know and and that was carried over from being a kid and, mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. views of Middle Eastern people being negative. And I'm like, man, if, if I got bullied in school or people would ask racist questions in fucking the suburbs of LA, right. the hell are they going to think in Texas and Florida? I mean, I, you know? Yeah. And you would have gotten the same stuff there too. Yeah. I just think it's, I at least like to note that the majority of people weren't like that. Yeah. The vast majority and that's of, great. of white people, you know, basically or yeah. even people you might label rednecks or whatever. We're mm-hmm. not like that to me personally. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but there were a couple of incidents where you're like, you don't even want to like get into it. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty humiliating <laughs> bullying. I mean, it's just, yeah, yeah. Not worth, I guess it, it was a long time ago, but does this all occupy a place in your head where like, I think it, I think it, I mean, it was so humiliating that I think that it prepared me for stand up comedy because yeah. nothing seemed like it could be as humiliating. Bombing didn't seem as bad. Yeah. In a weird way. So maybe it was a good thing. I also, you know, it was one guy that bullied me pretty bad. I also have a lot of, somewhat, emp- I later found out that he was. From a horrible family life. His yeah, they dad. usually are. Uh, right. So these like, are never from a supportive they're nev- loving. Right, right, you know? right. So, but it's, so it's hard to, you know, dump on some guy who had a, frankly, a worse childhood than I did, you know. Yeah. From what I, from what my understanding is. So, but it was pretty, it was pretty, um, it was pretty, it was a huge thing in my life at the time. Yeah. It was pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. Cause those times too feel like they're a lot longer than they are. So like they were, it probably wasn't even, that was probably three weeks tops. Yeah. But it you know? carries on like, it'll like carry on for the rest of that school year. Yeah. And the school year feels like a goddamn eternity. Oh yeah. When you're whatever, yeah. 12, 13, you know, yeah. now a whole calendar year just goes yeah. by in the blink of an eye. Yeah. Cause I remember having, you know, issues with people like, and not even, you know, some of it was like race based, you know, mm-hmm. it would come into the conversation mm-hmm. here and there. Like, and you're also a fucking towel head or whatever the fuck. Uh-huh. But it was, you know, mostly because I just was uncomfortable in my own skin and just an outcast partially because of that from being even younger where yeah. you're, 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 you know, outed as different. Like you have a big nose and you don't look white and you have a weird last name and the, f- your, the fucking food you brought smells weird and you're uh-huh. weird and you're different and you're, uh-huh. you're just inundated with that. So then that carries over into your general confidence, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I don't know about you cause uh, you are a very handsome guy, but Thank I will you. say this a late, but, very late bloomer, <laughs> but appreciate that. I will <laughs> say like, I did feel like, you know, if if most of the girls at my high school were white, right? Yeah. They're when they're imagining their boyfriend, they're not imagining someone who looks like me, and I felt totally invisible in that regard, yeah. which of extra confidence, right? Absolutely. 
Um, and you can't blame those girls for thinking that they're mm-hmm. when they're imagining their wedding, they're not they're imagining Troy Aikman, they're not imagining me or whatever, you know. So, right, I get it, but it does it. That was not great for my confidence. Did you I feel that think. way at the time though? Were you as diplomatic as you're? No, being I was now? not. Okay, because I was gonna say, I'm like, yeah, man, we went yeah. in way different directions. We, where you're like, I understand that's the way we raised. I'd be like, fuck no, you, bitch. How yeah. dare you? You know? No, I was not. I don't think I had the perspective to realize that. You know? How did you handle like things like that? Where, did you like? Like, because those things come out of you in a certain way. Where did you have like an angry period, or were you like completely withdrawn, or or how did that work That's out for you? Question. Did you get into fights, or did you avoid them completely? I avoided fights at all. I was not a tough guy, so yeah, I was likewise. not going to get into a fist fight with anybody yeah. if I could avoid it. Um, in terms of like how I dealt, I I think what I really did honestly was probably turn a lot more to like the arts as okay. a sort of a do you play nine instruments is that what happened <laughs> i mean I, I did play music but i think i got interested in you know films and um uh, and, 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 and literature and that type of thing that might explain you know um you know you know what it's like to come to this country or whatever and be okay. be different you know so you know, anything like that. I think it developed a strong sense of empathy, right? Because you could put yourself in other people's shoes real quick. I've always found, like, for instance, that at least in my age range, someone who, who's, who's uh, you know, gay or lesbian, they always understood what it was like to yeah. be different. Yeah. You know, so. I developed, like, an early sense of empathy for, like, the kids who you just could tell were gay or lesbian in school. I think I did too. I yeah. think I had no... Because you understand you're like, you're being treated like you're different in a way that you cannot control. You can't control. There's no ungaying yourself and there's yeah. no un-Arabing yourself. Or whatever there's not, that. yeah. You can't do it. And like, yeah. you're being marginalized just for like being yourself. Yeah. You know? No, being, exactly. You know, and I think I... I got very... I think I... I was interested in, you know, I mean, to call myself a punk rock fan might, might not be accurate, but yeah. I was inter- maybe a little bit of the angry thing there, but yeah, I got into that and like metal. Yeah. I because could, that was music that was like, fuck the established yeah. authority. And it never had to even really be political, but it was like the feeling behind right, it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I did get very interested in, I was a pretty early I was 16, 17, very interested in um, current events pretty early on and still okay. am, you know. So I think that kind of made me think a little bit about like, I was very concerned about marginalized people. You know, I it seemed impossible to want to be, I mean, uh, you know, someone who wasn't in favor of, of, of gay rights. You know what I mean? You're just equality like across the board, yeah. really. Yeah. And I was interested in that early, and I do think I—I I think maybe I took a big interest in comedy because, well, is you that know, did, okay? Even at that time, comedy, comedy did have people of different backgrounds, right? I mean, it was mostly uh-huh. probably white male, but of course, it had, you know, not a great example, but Bill Cosby, the Cosby <laughs> Show, you know, yeah, was on, and it presented a whole mm-hmm. different way of of looking at you know after Americans, right? Yeah. So. I do think it drew me a lot to the arts, I think. Was, Did you develop a sense of humor at an early age? I think so. And a lot of a lot of people will say that they developed it to prevent bullying or yeah. to, to fit in. I think I was way more not class clown. I was way more about making my friends laugh right. for whatever reason. I was not a class clown. I was a very well-behaved guy. Yeah. Um, I, I don't... What did I love? What was like the first... Yeah, and comedy was just a relief, right? It was yeah. from, a relief from all that. But I, I think when I was 16 or 17, 18, you know, I did very well in school. I got good grades and stuff. But inside, I think there was a lot of a lot of turmoil. Some of it maybe to do with my identity, but some of it just to do with, I, you know, it's just not being, fitting in. Not fitting in, but just being 16. <laughs> yeah, there, I mean, there know, is that anyway, whether, I, you're, yeah. uh, whether yeah. you're a minority or as, you know, white as the driven yeah. snow. Like, yeah. You can be a 16 year old kid and like ethnically or racially or whatever fit in, but you could be overweight. You could be all kinds of, you know, too tall too soon. I mean, it takes very little when you're a kid to, 
to to be you know cast out yeah. by the by the group of whatever is deemed popular you right know? exactly and, and I, I, I saw it know. happen all the time i don't know if you felt this way because i did feel like my parents couldn't understand me because they never went to high school in america right yeah and they didn't understand like this may sound nuts but according to my dad <laughs> The popular people at his school, first of all, it was mostly men. Right. Women, you know, unfortunately, it is a pretty, at that time, especially India, was particularly, you know, the popular kids were the ones with the best grades. <laughs> you know? So, That's you know, I, so funny. To, I didn't have anyone to really go to with those issues. I have an older brother, luckily, you know. What did he say when you were like, Dad? In my school, those are the people Dude, who are like yeah. spit on and beat yeah. up and told uh, like to, you know. I think another issue I had with, with my parents a lot, which is like if I complained about, my life was so much easier than theirs right. that to complain about anything was met with. It seems like nothing. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. Because I, I would say, you know, similar things like, you know, it's it's rough in school. You don't get it. And they're just like. We didn't even have electricity some days. Exactly. And we, the, the classic story of I had to walk 50 miles yeah. to and from school. But, you know, in those countries back then. And then, like, the whole moving to the States, learning another language, oh, figuring yeah. out how to survive yeah. here. It's like, if we did that, yeah. you can go make a fucking friend. Figure it, it out. That was exactly the attitude. And I think that, you know, it's, it did send me in a way of thinking, maybe for you too, of like, you know... You've had a friend come to you with a problem that didn't seem like a big deal, but you can't ever say you got to like, you got to at least, yeah. it's their problem and it's important. I, I don't quote the TV show Ally McBeal often. I do. But I saw, I I saw an episode <laughs> where someone said to her, what makes your problem so special? And she said, well, they're mine. And I guess yeah. I feel that's true. And I, even today I would have trouble going to my parents and saying like, yeah, because I do think they always... And you can't argue with it. They had no, they literally had no electricity running water. They had no doctor, you know, yeah. they are right. You know, yeah. it, it, they came here with accents. They didn't know the language, you know, yeah. they are right. They, they had it way. I actually heard it was interesting that, um, CNN commentator Van Jones, you know him, Yeah. you know, obviously a black guy, he went to Yale, did all this really impressive stuff. And he said, well, whenever he talked to his dad about like, what might be considered a microaggression or something like that. His dad would be like, well, did you have fire hoses sprayed? Well then shut up. You know, like in every culture, it's sort of like that. Yeah. Probably. They have one. Yeah. And even sometimes when I hear maybe a, a younger person from my culture complain, I'm like, well, come on. You, at least you have 50 people who look like you at your school. You know, yeah. I, I'm kind of have that attitude too. So, yeah, I think, I think I, so I sort of have it. I struggle with the whole bullying thing right now mm-hmm. because Part of you wonders, like, they're maybe, like, everyone's a way softer and, like, any form of, hey, you know, you don't fit in or mm-hmm. is um, is considered, like, totally unacceptable. And I'm like, I, I get that bullying shouldn't be tolerated, but, like, is the definition that broad now? Like, anything counts as that? And then B, I think, like, yes, bullying, you know, and just just being told you don't fit in or you're different, whether it's verbal or physical, any of that, it did affect me in a negative way. Um, but it also like strengthened me in some ways, you know, like when I combine the two things, when I combine like the fact that I was able to survive that and like learn from that, like, you know, they were wrong and those were just words and all that stuff made me a stronger person. And there's things I face now where I go, it's nothing, it doesn't, your your, your words yeah. don't matter. Like, yeah. especially in comedy, being told, you know, you didn't get this job, you can't get oh, this yeah. gig, you're not that funny yet, you're this and that. I'm just like, fine, doesn't matter, I'll get there. Yeah. You know, those yeah. things came, they were born of that, you know, combined with my looking back and going like, if my parents could do what they did, I can do this. Yeah. So I use those two things. I think that's, I think, that's definitely true of me. I mm. I wonder, you know, if I had a kid and they had like whatever, a funny nose and kids made fun of it, I would definitely yeah. have a lot of, I'd feel bad for them. Mm-hmm. Would I be thinking like, this will build character someday? I probably would a little bit. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess I felt like junior high school was not that, my high school was very much like people had cars. So it was very, yeah. you could, 
you didn't have to high, junior high was like lord of the flies i mean <laughs> yeah everyone's trapped uh, in a uh, fucking you know small building together yeah in, in my in. opinion junior high was where i really had more of an issues with bullying certainly more issues with bullying but yeah. just and it's also the beginning of puberty. Yeah. And your oh. bodies are changing and you have extra testosterone. Oh, yeah. You don't know how to manage. And yeah. It's a fucking nightmare. Seventh yeah. and eighth grade were nightmares. Uh, that's that. I would echo that. And I would say that once I was in high school, I was kind of in like the honors class. You know, you were yeah. kind of on your path. and yeah, You find a friend group. Exactly. Yeah, it wasn't sure. so bad. But junior high, was especially like P.E., Oh, oh, I know. Just like Lord of the Fly. I mean, I know. it was every man, every kid for himself, you know, it was, yeah. it was just brutal. So I, it did build character. Yeah. It strengthens you in ways. But then I guess, you know, you can make the argument like, well, what if some kids, you know, don't use that like, and then pursue the arts and become successful and happy and blah, blah. And some kids end up, you know, being the one that like they, you know, they, hang themselves in their bedroom oh, yeah. or do something and then you oh, go yeah. like I get that too and like but where do you draw the line and like how much of how much of that can be good and how much of it you know it's 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 impossible to tell I mean I you're totally right because there is gonna be I mean you hear about it you sadly read about it you know every now and then some yeah. kid killing themselves from like online bullying you know and you're yeah, like oh, yeah. okay which, well this obviously we never had that right yeah. Yeah, at least I didn't have that yeah which I actually think would have made it easier for people who maybe to 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 pick on people in general, right? I mean, yeah, just look at YouTube comments in general, <laughs> yeah. right? So I think it would have been worse for me to have that, you know. I think, yeah, but um, so I don't know what what the answer is. I guess, um, I know I was happy to get out of high school and get out of there. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. And now I look back, I actually have a lot of fondness for my hometown and yeah. everything. But at the time I was like, get me out of here. I, I hate it here. Yeah. You know? But which could have just had to do with being 16, right? Or sure. Yeah. I think a lot so. of it does because yeah, like you said, there wasn't, you know, a lot of people were nice and supportive and, yeah. and whatever and just treated you like any other kid. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so a lot of it is like, you know, you're, you're sick anywhere you are. You're a 16 year old who doesn't know what the fuck yeah. to do with. Yeah. The yeah thoughts coming into their mind exactly and, exactly did that sense of like you know uh empathy and like and and justice and a liking for the current events and stuff did that inform your decision to like go into law i think so i mean i think that um being totally honest probably what formed my decision going to law was basically you know i think in my family was expected you right. go to some type of graduate school i the typical often, you know, Indian kids are labeled as having pressure to be, become doctors. Yeah. I will say my dad didn't do a lot of that because he, him and I share a dislike of like blood and guts and stuff. So he kind of got like, <laughs> he's not going to want to do right. surgery. That's hilarious. That's why he didn't go to med <clears throat> school because he, he was like, I can't take yeah cutting people. Oh, I still don't even get how people do that for a living. It's obviously a very important, amazing profession, but, <laughs> right. um, so he, that, I didn't get a lot of pressure for that, but then the options become either a PhD in something or me- medical or, or law school or business school. Mm-hmm. I had no interest in finance or business really. So it was something I was naturally interested in, but I do think if I had had my way when I was 22, if I, if I was making this to myself, I would have just, um, you know, I, I would have, I, I went to college in San Antonio. I would have moved to Austin, which is sort of like, as you know, like it's like an hour from there. Yeah. An hour from there, but also kind of like the artsy, creative yeah. hippie town of Texas, even back then in the nineties, you know, yeah. late, early two thousands, I would have moved there and just gotten a job and tried to figure out what I was going to do. Or I would have moved to LA and done it. Just started out that way. Really? Um, so you already knew then at 22, you're like, I want to do comedy. And I think I did. I didn't know uh, how to tell myself that or my parents i really did not know how to tell my parents that you know yeah what I, the short story is i always tell people when they ask is like it was easier to believe it or not it'll sound insane it was easier <laughs> to go to law school graduate <laughs> practice get a bard them. to then to then to tell my parents did that to find how to find the way to communicate to them this isn't wow you know and as one another sort of i had, did have a friend in high school you know, he was um, a football player, but he was only like five six, and he would complain about it all the time. And I just like, Larry, what do you? Why do you play football? Because you know, in high school, football in Texas is enormous. Yeah, he, he just said, "Well, 
my dad played football, my brother played football, my uncle played football. It's just easier to play football than not. And I was like, you know what? I actually think I understand exactly where you're coming yeah. from. Because that's great. You know, nobody wants to, you don't want to, nobody wants to do something they know will hurt their parents' yeah. feelings and make them worry. Right. Which it definitely did. And even how after hard- you got a degree and passed the bar and the whole deal, you were like, I already did all this. Let me just go do comedy for a while. And, and I have obviously an amazing backup plan. They were still like, we can't bear the thought. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think some of it is, um, you know, it's also a little like, I do think my, I do think my dad is not someone who thinks the arts are particularly like a big deal or that. Right. I think the older he's gotten, the more he's come to appreciate them. But when you grow up poor, you don't have time for the art. You know, you don't think of it as, you know, practical or anything really that worthwhile, honestly. You almost yeah, I mean, think of if, it as like a luxury, which it somewhat is, you know, if you're, if I'm being honest, yeah. right? I mean, especially like if you went to a school where like the popular kids, you know, were the ones that got good grades. grades like, yeah, yeah. I the, mean, clearly the, it, the arts aren't, yeah, you know, yeah. And I do tr- think a, any sort of aesthetics are not like important, you not, know, because here no. you could have shitty grades, but if you looked really fucking cool and knew about awesome bands, people are like, that's the popular Yeah, exactly, kid. exactly. Exactly. So, so that was from like from a, a young age. Yeah, they were like, yeah. this is what matters: the numbers, yeah. the grades, that. Very much, yeah. And you know, it's it's, you know, at the time I probably thought it was a little unfair, but you know, when you look back, you think it's it's, you know, it's not so awful. I mean, you know, it wasn't so bad. No, not at all. Because like when you're an adult, you you f- you realize what it really is. It's like your parents are looking out for you. They want the best for you. They're yeah. not being dicks. They're not yeah. like, yeah. you know, watch this. We well, let you know, I would ask dreams. you, would you want someone you cared a lot about if they were like, well, I don't know if I should be a lawyer or a comedian. What would you tell them? It's a smart move. I mean, I would say like, and I don't you can call this a cop out or not, but I would say do both for a while. Like go to law school. Yeah. And do comedy in your spare time because you can, it'll be much harder to go back and probably get the degree. Yeah. You know, th- then, then, um, then go like, you know, doing comedy cause you can actually, you know, dabble in it a little and yeah. then get the degree and be done and then get a job doing what the fuck ever and pursue comedy because that takes a while, but there's never like an age that's too early or late to start, you know? Okay, that's, I mean that's a smart answer. I I agree with that. I I guess I mean like, I mean I I've, I've you've seen people in showbiz. It 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 can really turn people upside down, you know, make them very yeah. bitter, very maybe yeah. bring out drug and alcohol problems, and sure. make them more, you know. So I don't think I would I would never tell my kid or whoever someone to not do it, but I would never say like doing something practical is stupid, even if it bores you, you know, because yeah. It's practical. You know, there's a lot of benefit to it. I see it a lot more now. The one thing I could say now that I wouldn't have been able to say if someone asked me the same question when I was like 21 or 23 is is going to college and getting the degree and and doing all that stuff adds life experience. And if you want to be good at comedy and you want to, you know, be a a great musician or, or whatever it is, you will draw from those experiences even if you're an absurdist or anything like mm-hmm. that you're not a storyteller where i agree but more yeah, so yeah. obviously if you're a storyteller you're, yeah. you're talking about your your own life yeah. um you will draw from those things so even for that alone even for it to help you yeah as an artist go you know live life yeah because that fills up you know the well you're totally right i mean i i, I think that's 100 percent true and i do think you probably started at a younger age. I started when I was 28 doing stuff. I started sport. when I was 18. So, yeah, and I, I would wonder personally if I was 18, what the hell would I talk about? I talked about <laughs> being 18. Yeah. I yeah. did not have anything else. I yeah. talked about, like, I had, I had a, a joke where um, it's hard to meet girls because I would essentially, like, you know, I have to take them home to my parents and be like, you know, don't make noise or be quiet. Yeah. But, uh, 
but don't worry because because I, I would eventually somehow take him into my room and check out this shiny new race car bed or whatever <laughs> and if she was horrified i would complain about how i just got it polished and detailed or whatever the joke <laughs> yeah, was yeah, i'm paraphrasing yeah. yeah but that would do well yeah because it was like yeah this kid's ob- clearly 18 yeah yeah and yeah, that's yeah, yeah. you know yeah yeah probably true on some yeah, level i'm sure but that was yeah. the only like real life stuff oh, that yeah, people yeah. could connect yeah. with yeah and outside of that i did a lot of topical material because i was okay. you know very engaged in what was going yeah. on in the news and all that yeah. stuff and i didn't what else was i going to do i didn't have like you know my mind wasn't consumed with this breakup i just went through right, or right. this job that i yeah. hate you know yeah i had just gotten my first fucking job yeah you know yeah, yeah. so worked fucking fast food somewhere i don't know what it was but it's fucking forever ago but that was it. That's all I was really yeah talking yeah. about was you know my eighteen year old worldview on like social issues and international politics and and whatever and and uh, you know living at home and, yeah and that kind of stuff. So I mean I did try stand up in college mm-hmm. you know and I did it like five six times. The first time you hear this right, it went pretty well, and I talked about mostly believe it or not the TV show Dukes of Hazard, which That's I loved nice. as a kid. Yeah. And it was just like, why do they have so many ramps in Hazard County? You know, whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. right. Why don't they fix those doors? <laughs> you know, it's just right. like, you know, comedy about the logic of this show that is obviously ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I did <laughs> one set. I would say I had a couple sets that were not great. And I did one where I really bombed so hard. And I just, yeah, I, I didn't understand that that happens to everybody. And yeah. I thought, well... I guess that's it for me in stand-up comedy. <laughs> that's a wrap. You know? yeah. That's a wrap. That's I'm not really great what I, right away, so I guess yeah, it's over. Yeah. That's really what I thought, you know? Yeah. And I think that you and I both started before there were podcasts and maybe more of a guide on how how you move through it. Yeah. And I wonder yeah, there was if, no info, really. No info, really. And I wonder if I had heard, you know, some established comedian talking about how they'd bomb when they were younger if I would have just kept doing it, you yeah. know? But that was when I was like 21 and... I mean, it, you know, the first time you bomb, it's like, oh yeah. my God, especially at that age. You probably bomb when you were 18, unfortunately, right? I mean... Yeah, I, I just and, think, though, I was so young and dumb and excited. And yeah, it didn't You have that you youthful, that yeah. just stupid determination yeah. that I don't think it affected me. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would... some It, it started, to as like a year one and year yeah. two, and I was just like, fuck, yeah, that really sucked, you know? Because yeah. you have things to compare it to. Right, By right, that point, you've done right. five, 600 sets. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, then it kind of did. But I don't know what it would have been like if I started at 24. And I would probably would have felt the bomb. Harder, you think? Harder, yeah, maybe. maybe I, yeah. But I really, I don't know. Because yeah, who knows, who knows yeah. what I would have done from 18 to 24. I could have become a very confident person. Maybe yeah. I would have gone to school and done a lot of, theater or whatever so yeah. it would have been comfortable on stage yeah. and yeah who the fuck knows yeah who knows but, yeah yeah um but yeah i certainly would say you know that um if someone asked me i would just say look man stay in school for now and and pursue the pursue the degree and like you might still be able to do a decent amount of comedy and the argument you always hear is like you know but it's better to start this kind of thing when you're when you're younger youth is prized in hollywood blah 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 and you're like I can tell you right now, I can name a hundred people or more that started young. They had the whole thing. They looked whatever and uh-huh. it didn't work out for them. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right about that. And yeah. some it did right away. And there's a lot of in between. And, but if you look at like specifically with comedy, like all the, the, the greatest comics are, you know, they usually were at it for a while and oh, they yeah. broke when they were adults. Yeah. And, and again, largely it's because they talk about their lives, their life experience yeah. and, you just don't have that shit when you're 21, you know? That's what I think. Yeah. 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 I mean, I do think like, um, I don't, yeah. I think if I'd moved here when I was 22, I mean, you grew up in this area. Mm-hmm. It's a little different. I think I would have turned right back. I really? wouldn't be able to take it. <laughs> but when you moved out here, you were working as a lawyer, correct? Well, I'm not, I'm not licensed in California. So, oh, but I okay. had practiced law for a couple of years in DC and okay. Virginia, which is where I, what I, kind of law did you practice? Uh, civil litigation. Okay. So when I came out here, I did work at law firms though, but this was like legal writing, but I Got couldn't, it. I wasn't technically couldn't sign any documents. Okay. Yeah. So, so 
to some degree yes to some degree no huh. um but yeah i came out here i got a job and then then started out at the open mics basically yeah 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 so when you practice law there did you get a sense of like um were you performing in a way was it like a different sort of like when you went on stage you're like this isn't that weird because i was in front of people speaking was it ever like that uh, yeah yeah i don't know how you feel i i do think i'm a, actually a pretty shy person i don't know if you are maybe you are you, you sometimes you it, so i'm a pretty shy person but i do think that public oddly enough shy people you know can you know ironically they they love public speaking because mm. it's you don't have to work to get people's attention you just have it yeah so i actually always liked public speaking okay. i was never one of those people who didn't like it in terms of it being a performance, I act absolutely do think that when you think of typical trial law, like in a courtroom, which uh-huh. I did a couple trials, it is uh, a show. Yeah, you know, on some level, I think. But most lawyering is on paper. Most lawyering is between lawyers, so there's not as much yeah. show, you know. But in terms of in front of a jury, it is uh, plenty of. Famous trial lawyers will describe it as like, well, you're putting on your own play. They'll say yeah. that, you know, it's a hundred percent like that. Wow. I but f- most of your experience was just behind closed doors with other lawyers, a lot of paperwork, that kind of well, stuff. You know, yeah, it's a lot of writing, you know, it's a yeah. lot of writing, which I like, you know, oh, so you did? yeah, I, I like, I like legal writing and I like writing in huh. general, obviously, but well, clearly, yeah. um, so I, you weren't like, oh wait, I got to get out of here and go pursue comedy. I can't do this for the next 30 years. I think there was, okay, so the way I put it is like, I wouldn't say my desire to go into comedy was a negative reaction to the practice of law. Okay. A hundred percent. It was more like, I guess if I could put it, I put it this way to myself, was it was more like, if I don't do this, my life will mean nothing to me, if that makes any sense. Makes if I don't sense, try, yeah. then I will look back and I'll just say, what did I do on this planet? You know, and it, yeah. I don't know if it's because I loved comedy so much. I do think I do love comedy. I'm sure you do too. I think some of it was like I wanted to test myself or something. Yeah, I think there's the there's that thing that like lives in like we were saying earlier. Like there's it's a part of like American culture. You know, it's like you're you got to seek your own path and journey and go achieve greater so. things and prove to yourself. That's everywhere, you know? Yeah. Most people don't end up doing that because yeah. I think within that, people also say, well, get an education, work a 40-hour work week and play the safe road. They're kind of like always conflicting with each other, you know? And there's a small window of time, I think, for your average person to try that, to and go I, pursue. And I think my window was closing because I was pushing, you know, getting close to, to 30. You know, I was 26, 27, and I'm like... Yeah, living in D.C. Yeah, and, if I don't do this now, it's yeah. over. So, I mean... Because like did in, yeah, the yeah. next few years you could have met who would have become your wife, had a couple of kids, and then that window just starts closing. You can't just uproot your family, move oh, to yeah. LA, be like, "Dad's yeah. going to go be a stand-up." Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I think, um, I think I knew from the time I was like fifteen. If you'd asked me what I wanted to do, I would have said stand-up comedy at fifteen. Yeah, wow. But I don't think I had any like like yourself probably. I had zero idea how to get into it. I thought everybody in showbiz, their dad was the president of showbiz. I mean, <laughs> I remember reading that Conan yeah. O'Brien got late night with Conan O'Brien, right? And I was like, read a little bit about him. Like he went to Harvard. I was like, well, yeah, but surely his dad is just the guy who runs NBC. Because doesn't everybody want their own talk show? You know, or whatever. <laughs> right, right. I right. had no clue when I moved here. I didn't know what a spec. Sc- I didn't know so many things. Oh yeah, no one knows anything. Yeah, and it's crazy uh, when I think about it. But I guess I, I guess I felt that strongly about it, which is, which is maybe. I also thought of it this way. Uh, this is an example I've used before. I've talked about it, which is um, maybe you've seen these Sam Adams beer ads with this guy. Uh, the guy, his name, his last name is Cook. He's the founder of it. And he yeah. says like, you know, we have the best barley and blah, 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 or whatever. Right. So he, I read this article about him. This is before I got into comedy where he, they asked him like, why, you know, basically how did you get this idea to start this? Because the time starting a small brewery was, was really different. It was mm-hmm. not, now there's so many microbreweries we don't think about it, but he yeah. was like one of the first. And he was this guy who was like, I think a son of immigrants and was the first person in his family to go to college. He actually went to Harvard. He went to Harvard Business School. Oh, wow. He had a great job at this place called Boston Consulting Group, BCG. It's like this 
well-paid job. He made partner. Yeah. And he decided to look at his dreams in terms of like the way he would look at a business, which is like percentages. And he said, there is a literally a 0% chance I'll be happy doing this. Even if there's a point zero 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 one chance I could do this brewery and it could make me happy. That's actually the smarter thing to do. Wow. And that's actually kind of the way I assessed it. I said, if I was the chief, ju- if someone said you can have whatever dream law job you want, you can have a billion dollars, but you can never even take your shot at comedy. I would have said no. Wow. If I was being true to myself, not trying to please my parents or my community, you know, yeah. I would have said, yeah, but I just really feel like this urge to see if I'm any good at it or something. You know, I, wow. I don't know. I, that's the way I thought of it. And I felt like if it was that extreme, I should do it. You know? Because, yeah, that is very extreme. It feels that like way. If, if, yeah. if the scenario is everything almost anybody could imagine and want. Yeah. Or take a shot of, at this I don't even mean like, shot, like making right? it. I mean, just taking my yeah, chance just to do it. It felt so core to... Um, my sense of a life's purpose, I guess for me, yeah. or where do you gen- think that comes from? God, because I, your family by like, they never encourage that sort of no, like, go explore no, your not. inner desires and be yourself. They, they were very much like play it safe. These uh, are the jobs that are good. So where do you think that? I think some of it from? probably came, you know, it's interesting. I, so I don't know if this is true, but someone told me that someone asked Johnny Cash, like, how did you become Johnny Cash? And he said, well, probably low self-esteem and only the kind of low self-esteem your dad can give you. And I guess I feel right. like that is a little bit applicable to me on some, I felt like well, your dad gave you low esteem. Just low self-esteem? I think so. And it, not even on purpose, but it just happened that way. And I think that from like what tough love, that kind of thing, tough love, probably also like nothing was ever good enough. Right. But right. More from like, that's probably how his dad was to him. It probably drove my dad pretty hard too. Right. Uh, I think that I had to, I think it probably had a lot to do with like feeling like if I can do something really hard, then I can feel good about myself and it can answer a lot of these issues I have about yeah. myself. I don't think I even knew it then. I feel like people who are generally confident don't have that like, from from a, like a younger age, don't have that desire to like, you know, pad their self-worth not even pad but like fill the void where self-worth would be because i know i had that when i was younger i was just like i'm not i'm not cool i'm not popular i'm not smart i'm not fun i'm not attractive i'm not all these things and i was like and then i guess maybe that's why people are drawn to the arts because you're like look at this person excelling at this thing under a spotlight adoring fans yeah I I i don't know if you feel this way it probably applies to you or probably to most people I know who are good. It's in it, which is like, I feel like I, the best parts of myself are on display when I'm doing stand up comedy. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like if someone is going to respect me, yeah. if they saw me do stand up, they, they would respect me, you know? Yeah. Um, that's how I feel about it, you know? Yeah. Whereas uh, yeah, at, at a party, agree. I'm very quiet. That I'm is the answer succinct. to that question. When, cause I get that a lot. People go, how could you be, how could you have social anxiety? Like you're on stage yeah. doing all this stuff. I'm yeah. like, yeah, but I've been doing that for a long time. I've worked hard. I know how to do it. Yeah. And I'm at home there way yeah. more than a room full of fucking strangers. That, so that's, that's exactly how I feel. And I do feel like, I mean, that kind of, I mean, I at the time, if you'd asked me when I moved here, why I was doing, it, I probably would have made an argument about like maybe somewhat self-satisfactory, but like being like, I'm being courageous. I'm being brave, uh-huh. whatever. When I look back, I think how desperate was I <laughs> for like yeah. to answer some of these things that were inside me, yeah. you know, I must've been so, it's so insane to do that when you have, I had a job that, <laughs> right, you know, right. had health insurance, you know, it's so nuts, you know? So yeah, some people argue that it's like, you know, people with big egos come do this. And I think some people do it because the complete lack of one. I think so. I think most people... They're just trying to fill a void. I think most people do it for the latter reason. Yeah. I think. And I do think that... Ego sometimes comes later. It's like Yeah. And I think a lot of people who do all kinds of things that are... I I think ambition can come from um, trying to 
to make yourself feel good about yourself for, right. for a lot of people, you know, even like Abraham Lincoln was, people think was basically like that, you know, he, really? he, his dad was very awful to him and he was this hick and he really wanted to yeah. make something of himself to prove he was worth something, you know, or whatever. All, all kinds of people I think are liked. I think a lot of politicians are uh-huh. like, you know, Bill Clinton had this ambition that came from like his dad was yeah. you know, bad, you know, awful to him. So, so I, I, I do think, and some of the people I know who are the most steady people who they do seem to have from an early age, relative confidence, you know, the kind who become, you know, choose a steady profession and that kind yeah. of thing. So, and I, it's I don't know how you thought, but when I was a kid, I thought everybody wanted to be a great artist, a great yeah, politician, actor, a great scientist, star, whatever. Big thing. And I think actually a very small percentage clearly do. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, most people just want to have, a good life with a family and yeah. have as much fun as possible. And that's about it. They don't want to like start a company or <laughs> right, right. write a novel, you know, or anything, you know, I don't think. Yeah. I think, yeah, the large majority are like, you Which know, is I, totally fine. I mean, that, yeah, that's great. Sure. You know, yeah. I hope, Cause I mean, I know the second thing I wanted to be after like a comedian or whatever was like, it'd be cool to be a teacher. Okay. Yeah. Because I had such a, a big problem with the way things were in school with like right. how little the teachers cared and how yeah. like I just saw all these problems with it. Right, so right. I was like, my anger went towards, you know, that next where I was like, I could fucking do this better. Teachers should be like this and da 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 Yeah. And I was like, I think it would be fun. I think I'd be good at it. Yeah. And that's as far as you can get. Right. From, from like, under yeah, the spotlight, absolutely. trying to make tons of money and be famous. Yeah. Teachers are underpaid, undervalued, under everything. Yeah. And yeah. that came right after comedian actor or like whatever right. wow you know? okay yeah which I, yeah. I still can't really explain that but yeah so yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with like good noble honest hard work that is out of the spotlight and, no, I, and not yeah. really creative although yeah. you know you can be creative as a yeah. teacher but yeah um but yeah it makes me wonder like now that like you wonder if like second generation and third generation like ethnic families like because you would think like for a lot of years, A, everything was very white driven, you know, entertainment and all that sort of stuff. And you wonder if kids grew up not even thinking to do that because in the family and in the culture, it's like, it's not a appreciation for the arts is not there. It's like, look, we got here. We're in this country. Mm-hmm. You're going to do this. And that's how our entire fucking family has been for mm-hmm. ever and ever. But, you know, with the generation that Aziz is from and me and you and And then the one after that, you would think like more and more will pursue it and get into it in a time where there's just more room for it anyway. That's right. And I do think, I don't know about you, but I, I I mean, you have, you obviously wanted to put it, but I did somewhat hesitate thinking, well, there's no one like me on TV. Why would Mm -hmm. I bother to try to be on TV? I definitely had that thought, you know, there were no's from all sides from in, in, in the home with the family on TV and everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But you wonder if now they'll just be more and more. I think there are more and more comparatively, at least yeah. Indian comedians for sure. I mean, I'm always mildly shocked. Yeah. And like I said earlier, I was talking about the White House. I mean, again, to me, that was like shocking that that could happen. Yet I think maybe to younger people is like, well, why wouldn't it? You know, we try, yeah. you know, we're, we're here and we're trying and we're working hard. And, but I'm yeah. just like, oh, that business is so out of date. It doesn't think like that, but they clearly do yeah. to some degree. Right. So I don't know, even like something that, um, you know, I, 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 you know, as, as you mentioned, I'm a writer, and I, I never thought I to to write a script about that was personal or something or about my own culture because I thought who would be interested? Right, this was my honest answer. Like, who would be interested in whatever, like an Indian version of the Cosby Show or something? And then now there's, you know, just things fresh off the boat or whatever, you know. And I'm like, and now people keep telling me you should be doing that. That's what people are interested yeah. in. So I, I, I do think the business changed quite a bit in the time you and I have been in it in terms of that for the better, you know, yeah. um, in terms of diversity, but I don't, I, I do think that I, I'm definitely old enough to have come from a generation of, you know, Indian people who just never saw anyone like them on TV. You know, yeah. it was like mind blowing when you did, you know, yeah. it was like, I can't believe this, you know? So, and it still is when I see like, <laughs> I mean, it's probably so routine to someone who is younger than me. It's funny. But when I see like Sanjay Gupta or something, I'm just like, 
Wow. Yeah, you're like, like whoa. Got, whoa. <laughs> That's funny that that still is is there with you. It, I think it always will be. You know, it's yeah. still mind blowing, and and you know, I do remember seeing like, um, you know, she had obviously been on The Office, but I saw a billboard for Mindy Kaling's show when it was coming out. Yeah. Mindy Project. I was just like, you're like, what the fuck? I, I mean, it just caught me like, <laughs> I cannot believe this. I guess like the the equivalent, or the closest thing to that would be, like if you were. From a really small town somewhere in, I don't know, where Virginia, South, mm-hmm. wherever, mm-hmm. Idaho, let's say. Yeah. And someone from your small town made it. Oh, yeah. And you, everyone was similar. white or whatever. This yeah. is the only oh, example yeah. I can think for yeah. white people. Like, they would sit there and go, we never would have imagined oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that a town of 1,900 people, you know, and Chris yeah. Pratt came out of that. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. the guy, yeah. you know? Yeah. It, that would be the equivalent. I guess I if think you so. Seeing, yeah. Every time you see an Indian person, you're yeah. just like, "What are the odds?" What are the I odds? I never see I that. But now, you know, <laughs> again, it's a different world. It's different. Show is different for the better. Yeah. I, I just think totally. like, and I do think that influenced my parents too. They were like, "It's great and all you're interested in this, but wh- who? No one's. Why would they ever make anything about you? You know, like why would you be of any use to showbiz? You know, right? Be the, they're thinking too, and they're you know, um, which isn't totally impractical or dumb. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is, it is like, uh, I still have it though. Like I said, I still am like, wow, like I can't believe it. You know? And I was, I was even, so this was a week, just the white house correspondence was just like two Saturdays ago. I was still standing there going like, I cannot believe wow. there's three Indian guys back here who worked on this thing. Like I couldn't believe it, even yeah. though it probably isn't really that big a deal at all. You know? So I don't know if it's, I guess it's just age or where I'm from or whatever. Yeah generation that type of thing yeah i think i think it probably is but that's great i think that that it's good that things have are moving that that quickly i guess now yeah and i it don't took know long enough but you know i guess yeah it's good that they are yeah and when i got into stand-up i didn't like try to like not wear my ethnicity it just wasn't what i was interested in talking about yeah likewise you know and whenever i do talk about it, i devolve into what i'm doing now which is i'm quite serious yeah um, <laughs> and i have nothing funny to say about it except but I'm I'm very interested in it, obviously. You know, as, yeah. as you are. I feel like that. So, yeah, that's where it starts. Because I I'm now talking about it a little bit on stage. stage. Yeah, but I for a very you didn't long really. Time. I, no, I, I never know. did. Yeah, and the very little I did, I'm like, I'm not gonna be a fucking monkey about it and just go like, you know, Arabs are like this. Yeah, like that is yeah. disgusting to me. I don't care for that either. When like, I see that, I'm just like, you fucking sell out. Like, yeah. how dare you boil down your people to like a f- joke about the food they eat or the way yeah. they, it's like, get yeah. the fuck out yeah. of here. You know? I mean, the other thing I thought that maybe you thought too, I mean, again, I'm not using a great example, but Bill Cosby was someone who <laughs> yeah. showed that his, the group he's from, his behavior, you know, not counting, you know. Right, 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 right. You know, you just show that you're a person. Yeah. And that, that yeah, was, that's that was more my, yeah. my, I did have that thought early on of like, uh-huh. rather than get up on stage and do accents or talk about curry or whatever, <laughs> right. I'll show, you know, I'm a person. Whereas somebody like, just as an example, you know, Hassan or maybe, you know, Hari Kanabal, they, they wear it on their sleeve and they talk about it very directly. Maybe somewhat similar to someone like Richard Pryor. So, you know, they're, yeah. they're going to hit it head on and go at it and talk about it. Whereas my, if I was trying to do anything, frankly, what I was trying to do was get a writing job, number one. All right. <laughs> but, but after that, I was, I guess, in a bigger goal might have been, yeah. like, you know, people will see that whatever. People, yeah. You know, and my mom always said to me early on, you know, she's like, you're probably going to be one of the first people that look like you that anyone. So you always have to have manners because you know what I mean? Like, yeah, in a place like Arlington, if you're even if you're seven or if you're 16, you know, how many people are going to have interacted with with an Indian person? So you want to it kind of puts the pressure on you of like you're basically representing like one point two billion people. Oh, <laughs> so wow. have manners, you know, and yeah, but nice. I think she meant it, I think it was a good lesson, you know, of like you know it just made me have manners frankly but you know yeah, yeah. Uh, you know i think she was right in a town like that people aren't going to be that exposed to right you know don't, I, yeah if they're one experience like the guy's a dick yeah you, you know? don't want to get give that reputation and i and i'm sure you are are often the first you know lebanese american person some many people around yeah. you have interacted with yeah, a lot of people don't know 
that surprisingly still to this day they just go what where or what is that I'm like how do you not even know it's a country right, like right, i get right. if you don't know where it is on a map yeah, and yeah yeah so i'm doing like b- bits kind of about that you know yeah. my experiences with yeah. that sort of thing you yeah. know and like people questioning how american i am and that kind of thing not not in very overt ways and but yeah, I, I'm approaching like that the same way I guess like Hassan and Hari do it, you know. Yeah. They yeah. they but they go way more direct and they're they you know, do. They and do. I like the way they approach it. Like I do too. it's yeah. interesting. And they're not doing the you know, you know how we Indians are with their they're not. curry yeah. or yeah. whatever the fuck, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um which is great. It's the way it yeah. should be done. That's the way to inform people. Like, hey, I'm just like you and I'm not in certain ways, but I'm still, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, the food we ate is different, blah, blah, blah. And whatever way you're going to do it. Um, that, I think, is the most, like, engaging and interesting way. Because the other way, you know, people like to tell themselves, like, no, you know, when you bring humor to it, everyone understands. You go, no. Because when a Mexican comic makes a joke about, like, and then I stabbed him. Like, you know, or, or whatever it yeah. is. Like, you know who Mexicans yeah. are with their fucking tamales or something like that. Sometimes you see people go, like, see, they do do that. You go, yeah. that's, you're doing the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. It makes me I crazy. Agree. Yeah. I mean, it's also not that surprising either, right? If you've yeah. seen so much stand up as like yeah. you and I have it to to, to yeah. play that that. But yeah, for a long time way. I want I just like I went I just went too hard in the other direction. Where I'm like I'm never going to mention it. And that was like that was deliberate or it was what you felt? It was deliberate, deliberate because I just like thought it was just such cheap comedy, you know? And I'm like I'm so much more than that stuff. Like I don't sit there and live this. I don't filter everything through being... Well, that's that's also... People ask me, how come I never talk about my background? Or they, or they also ask me, how come I never talk about having been a lawyer on stage? I right. Mean, you're a little more familiar with my act. You know it's basically pretty pretty third. It's not like I'm addressing... I'm not personal anyway. Right, in right, general. right. But... And I was like, well, I don't want to be... Have that one badge. Like, that's the yeah. lawyer comedian. That's the, the Indian comedian. You know, I didn't want to... It's too limiting. I, yeah, I guess I, yeah. I I did have that thought quite often about like, well, I don't want to just be that guy, right? But I have had comedians, I won't say who, but <laughs> some pretty successful ones even say to me, well, you know, this business they just put you in a box, and your problem is they put you in that Indian guy box anyway, and then when you don't address it, people are like, why like I didn't address it at all? You know, this is more like ten years ago, but right? Okay, yeah. You know, do you know what I'm talking about? Did anyone yeah. ever tell you like you should play it up because oh, I've heard that a lot, right? I've heard yeah. that a lot. They so go, I've Dude, heard it a lot. play into that shit that's hot right now. They're looking for the, and I'm like, but I mean, and, and I get where they're coming from, but those are usually people that if you look at their comedy, they're going for the dollar too, or they're going yeah. for the most obvious thing. Yeah. You know, I've yeah. never heard the, the most honest comedians that are just really doing it for themselves to like, you know, achieve high art in their own right. regard ever say that kind of thing. Yeah. They never say, yeah, you know, play up this or do something that is disingenuous, you know, to you. They never say that. They go yeah. do what makes you happy, you know, write what's honest to you and people will connect with that. Like you'll eventually find what is going to work. I mean, work that for that's you. definitely what I what I think is true. But I do think like if you're viewing it from like the perspective of someone like a casting agent or something, yeah, you know, you're just never going to shake. They're going to say, is an Indian guy right? For, they're never going to not say like, right. is Raj the human being right? They're always going to filter it through that, which is totally yeah. reasonable. And they would do it to a white person yeah. too. Right. So I do think like there is that box you get put into right? yeah. on some I mean, level. Maybe I'm, I'm, I mean, maybe I'm crazy or something, but in my head, I'm just like, well, I'm just going to get to a point where like it doesn't, like they wouldn't think, I mean, I, I it's different, I guess for me too, cause I get cast so multi-ethnic cause mm-hmm. I can just go for so many things, yeah, but like, yeah, yeah. but I think if you get to a point where they see you first, you know, your career or like you've defined yourself as a comedian to where they're like, that's not a guy who can play an Indian. That's Raj Desai. And then he can play whatever. You know what? Maybe like Aziz is an example of yeah, a guy yeah. who got to that level. Yeah. Yeah. Where he was yeah. just like this hip, was, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, like the yeah. human giant thing was just these cool Good, guys yeah. doing, you know, yeah. funny, weird shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think he had it built in too, where he was like, I'm not playing these characters, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm sure what, what happened after that when offers were coming in for all this stuff. Yeah. Or auditions. I'm sure a lot of them were, you're this cab driver, but it's hilarious. You're this, yeah. you know, you own this restaurant yeah. and I'm sure it, it was. I mean, I, I yeah. I mean, I actually keep a lab coat in my trunk in case I get a doctor audition. 
<laughs> for a scientist audition or something. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> So That's I, really funny. I, I mean, I have been through that a little bit. Not, I've never been that serious of an actor, but but I have right, been through right, that. right, yeah. So That's really funny. Yeah, I, I don't know. Have you ever had someone in an audition ask you to do an accent of some type that wasn't like British or something that was like meant to peg um, you for your maybe once or twice when yeah. I was younger, but like I I don't I I think I did it and I was just like I was like I'll do it a a poor I just bomb the audition or something because I'm like I don't want to. I've that. had it multiple times, and, but my other question to me when I've asked myself, is it even people do talk like that? Indian people do have, you know, Indian, yeah. born, born Indian have an accent. Is it even bad or racist? I don't even know. I guess it's the nature of the character. It boils down to that. Probably, I guess. Yeah. And some yeah. people go even more hard line on it. They go, I get that they do, but the roles are so overwhelmingly stereotypical yeah. that like until they start doing the other thing, I just refuse to do this because yeah. if the more people refuse, the more likely they'll start yeah. writing characters like, yeah. uh, uh, Aziz is on parks. Right. 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 Yeah. You know? And yeah. then, yeah, because there are, sometimes you do get into a cab that's being driven by an Armenian guy out here or an Indian guy in New York yeah. or whatever. Those are, that's real life. But yeah. someone was using the example once that like, um, um, you know, there are, roles for black people but you like it shows like the wire or whatever like that show is all not all but like 98 percent black and you're like yeah but you know i have black friends that go like yeah but why do they have to be shows about drug dealers mm-hmm. and gangs and criminals you yeah know? yeah so balance the scales i guess a little bit how you know have a guy that is indian who's just an accountant or a chef or like yeah. at a place that's not an Indian, Absolutely. you know, he's right, a French right, right, or, right, right. or whatever. Yeah, but. yeah, I totally agree. And I do think looking back, I will say, I mean, I alluded to it a couple of, you know, the media had a big impact on what mm-hmm. I saw on TV had a big impact on what, yeah. how I saw myself you yeah. know, in terms of, am I American or not? Or am I Absolutely. part of this? And yeah, it, it had that effect on me too. I thought like, I, I, to me it was, all the way down to like white families are are happier. The homes are better. The homes are happier. The homes are this because well, that's what you about, see. On TV. I don't know about your home. I will say this, but so so family life depicted on like Full House. People are very affectionate, right? They say "I love yeah. you." Everybody hugs. Yeah. That's not the way Indian people are. Yeah, you know they're not that physically affectionate, and I think that had a big impact on me too. I thought right. I was maybe being. I, a little neglected or something when I probably was just totally normal for my culture. That's what it you is. Know? And they show it, you know, pe- any people show affection in a different way. Like yeah. my mom would make your favorite food. You know, she wouldn't yeah. necessarily make a big scene about you coming home or whatever. You know, that's how she would show you. She right. was glad you're home or whatever. Or so, another one people point out was like, uh, like a lot of white families are more, will more often than not like have really intimate conversations about like things that, ethnic families would never bring oh, up like sex you know. and dating. Oh, yeah. It's like, how the fuck could you talk to your mom oh, about yeah. oh, a yeah. girl you're dating? Like, oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. I, no. I mean, I totally, I, I mean, my dad did not give me any sort of puberty talk. Yeah. I know? didn't get it. Yeah. And that's actually probably pretty rare for where you and I went to school. Right. right. Um, but if you ask yeah. me now what I want, I would not want my dad, I would do it for my son, of course, but yeah, it would have just been so, insanely awkward I would I have not it's awkward enough with people who are used to that happening oh, or whatever yeah. or had it happen for themselves but no way I mean you're t- okay that's it that, okay that's I'm not shocked or anything but like that's the way I grew up too it was not nobody talked about anything intimate or something yeah you, know, you just it was just crazy and you just didn't do it you know if you had something like I would never to this day tell my parents I felt depressed or something. Never. Yeah. My parents wouldn't understand. I I would, if I was like, I have depression or anxiety disorder, all these different. And like, so you're sad, like you're feeling sad about something. Like they would think it was circumstantial. Like they wouldn't think like you have this like chemical imbalance in your head from a young age that doesn't let you get out of bed some days and feel that your life's worth living or whatever. Cause they didn't just, they didn't grow up. With, with that, it. I was, think, and I and I do think, like, if you went to America in like 1950, it was the same for mm-hmm. people, you know, all you know, white people then that yeah. they they felt like their 
you know, they couldn't admit they, like I just read Bruce Springsteen's autobiography. You know, was he, it good? I'm a huge Springsteen fan, so I, yeah. I loved it. But Okay, um, good. Yeah, I like him too. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting, but you know, he says that there What's was your favorite Springsteen album? Uh, Darkness on the Edge of Town. Yeah, me too. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I love Darkness. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he had all these... It actually, reading about his home life did remind me a little of mine, where, yeah. you know, in the 1960s, you just didn't... You didn't say... Dad, I feel depressed. <laughs> I feel yeah. You, you just didn't do it, and I was like, okay, I get that. Whereas, like a lot, I think a lot of people now reading that would sound like ancient or something to yeah. them. You know, so yeah, that is where like I think like cultures that are traditionally looked at as more like buttoned up or conservative in those parts of the world, like people think like, well, they don't discuss their feelings or they don't like you know yeah. let women do this or that. Yeah. You go, if you go back in American culture, not even that far. No. There's and, a and, lot of similarities. And you know what? And like, you know, you talk about arranged marriages back then, you mostly married someone in your town. Yeah. It wasn't like you were. That you had to get the approval of yeah, their parents and your yeah. parents. Yeah. Like, it wasn't an arranged marriage, but right, it was yeah. like somewhat similar and limited. And if like, know, so. there are, I've, I've talked to friends of mine <clears throat> that grew up in the South who like, if they go home now around the age of 30. People are like, you're, how are you not married? How are you yeah. not married? And you're like, well, they're. American and white and from here it's yeah. like but their family's looking at, down to where they think they're like lesbians yeah I believe that so you know I you know it's 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 comforting I guess in some level for, yeah. for you or me you realize you're just part of this migration of this country and everything and yeah. it happens to everybody but I would like to think that I would be me and my brother are more likely to talk about our feelings or whatever yeah. you know same with me and mine yeah and I'm more likely to go to my mom about my feelings. Just I Likewise. think women are a little more yeah in tune empathetic. with that. Thing. I would never. And talk I think to my they're dad. there more often when you're growing up. Yeah. When shit hits the fan. When yeah. you're a kid, you're like, I got beat up in school, or my grades this, or I feel like that. You go cry to them because yeah. your dad's at work, and, and my dad's, dad's at work, and my dad would just say those aren't problems. Honestly, I think yeah, this yeah. would be his general attitude. Yeah. Um, totally. And not to. To, to dump on the guy, he, he did a great job yeah. with what he had. But, um, you know, so I, I do think I would try to be a little bit more, I guess, Americanized or Westernized about raising my kid. You know, more like, yeah. what's bothering you? You know, not like. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I grew up ar- yeah, around that, I guess. But it did school. seem when I saw like Full House or something, like it just seemed like people have families like this where they yeah. ask people what's wrong with their day and they talk to them about i mean yeah. i was just and it did have a huge impact on me i don't yeah. know if i thought i guess i don't want to put words it sounds like you were saying you you felt like you came from a bad family because it wasn't like what oh, was no no TV. not or, at all i just or, I, I meant like they're they were like closer in the sense that it like you see on tv so you in my head their homes were, were happy or whatever. happier yeah. and more like the, yeah. the dad's like took more interest in their friends and the uh-huh. thing and i think part of that stemmed from like my dad parents were so disconnected from American pop culture that I couldn't mm-hmm. be like, Likewise, hey, what about yeah. this rock and roll album or let's go play yeah. catch? Because, you know, he's at work all day, every day. Yeah. And when he's at home, he's not like trying to figure out what's cool on MTV yeah. or anything. So like, yeah. so in, in that sense, I thought like, wow, those white families are like, probably they got it going on over there. Like the, I guess I did think that parents I, are watching the Simpsons yeah. together and like they're, they're just that. doing more things that I wished I yeah. you know was connected to yeah. at school with my friends and with my family. Yeah. But then in reality when you when you grow up and when you go to those homes and you're just like, oh, there's plenty of problems there. A lot of the homes are oh, yeah, broken in whatever sense. Yeah. Or their parents also don't take yeah. an interest because they're busy too busy yeah. working yeah, 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 or just yeah, yeah. being shitty parents yeah. or, or anything yeah. in between, you know. So yeah. yeah. But there are certain things you think and it's sort of related to like, you know, how I thought things were in the South or wherever. There are stereotypes you have, you know, about, oh, yeah. and it comes yeah. from the fact that, you know, everyone's in their corner going, they're probably like this. Yeah. And then you never meet in the middle and, you right, know, right. until you grow up. Until you grow up. And yeah. now, you know, you have like, yeah, I have friends from like, I mean, all walks of life, you know. Yeah, I will say, like, out of anything I've done, um, stand-up comedy introduced me to a lot of different types oh, of yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know it often gets a rap for being undiverse. That may very well be true, but 
you're going to meet people yeah from just different parts of the country different different ethnic different parts of the world even you know so yeah and so many just different kinds of people like people that i know i would if i didn't do comedy i would not be friends with right. or see a few times a week that's absolutely true as well yeah for me probably more if i'm being because like once i was in law school and on that path i was only going to meet other professionals oh yeah yeah you know and yeah i mean i have friends with like who've been in jail or like yes. it, like were yeah, criminals would, before this yeah. and Friends that were lawyers before this, right, friends right. that were a, a friend that was a doctor, Matt Eisman, you know him? I did, yeah, yeah. We don't talk that much anymore, but like, yeah. he was a legit. No, I remember he was a doctor. Working, yeah, yeah doctor. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah, and it just runs, it just runs the gamut, but um, yeah, it is in a lot of ways incredibly diverse. It is. I would say at least socioeconomically. Yeah, I yeah, won't, yeah. I won't necessarily comment on the male female divide, so it's right, right, pretty right, big yeah. and stuff like that, but socioeconomically, yeah. You can go to open mic. You can find someone who went to Harvard, someone who's a lawyer, and someone yeah. who never someone who dropped out of middle school. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. it's it's it's, it's interesting. I, I did feel that immediately when I got into it. I was like, oh wow, like yeah, people are really from all types of different backgrounds. You know, and yeah. It's just it's 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 like immediately exciting. You're like, God, there's so many different people. I have yeah. so many questions. You know, yeah. yeah. You learn a lot of stuff that you otherwise wouldn't have. You know. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which is hopefully the aim of this thing. Yeah. Um, we've been, we've been, dude, every time I tell myself an hour, hour, we've been talking for two hours. Really? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I hope that's a good thing. And I think it thing. is. Okay, I didn't, okay. I didn't notice really. I, I occasionally very, check battery life, but I can't remember. I didn't notice. I was very engaged. Okay, good. good. It was very interesting. That's so, good. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to? Um, no, no, no. I, think. I used to have like a questions. Yeah. Where I was like, I want to ask people this when I first like was, was coming up with what to do. But then I'm like, everyone's so different that like, I don't know that a lot of like the questions were, you know, would apply. Like one thing I thought before I started was like, <clears throat> you know, if I talk to people that grew up in certain parts of the country and this is again, a holdover of what I imagined. Things right, were like, right. I bet they'll have stories about not fitting in or getting bullied or this or that. I mean, you don't really have any of maybe a couple yeah, but it didn't like consume your childhood or anything, right? Right, or, or whatever. And a few other people I talked to, they were like, "Yeah, a little, a few things here and there," and but not really, you know. Yeah. Fahim Anwar I had on, he grew up in Seattle, it's right? A progressive, liberal right, right, right. community, the whole thing. But those are like, and so that kind of like scratched that question off for the most part. I maybe touch on it, and be like, yeah. "Okay, that's not there. Let's go to other stuff." Yeah. But that already has been like a really cool thing I've discovered, yeah. like yeah. how how accepting a lot of people are, yeah. you know, in, no, in different I would say, parts yeah, of the, the majority of people that might be labeled, labeled like, I mean, I grew up in a really Republic. I mean, yeah. most of them were, were pretty nice. Yeah. You know? I mean, obviously it wasn't perfect, you know, yeah. but when I look back on it, I always say like, I, I will also say this, there was a lot of evangelical Christians right. in my community and I know they, some, they do, get a bad rap for maybe being closed minded sometimes about gay marriage or that type of thing. Right. But those people are, they just treat people well yeah, and they will be welcoming to you no matter who you are yeah, just because they think they're, they, that's how you should treat people, you know? So right. I, I did have, I do have a soft spot for them as well. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think a lot of this was, um, we already went through anyway, it just sort of happens yeah. in the conversation yeah. any sort of, um, um, see one that I had, this doesn't apply to you is, do you ever have a desire to go back and live in, in the country you came from or your parents came from? But like your fucking life was tech. I guess that answer would be, do you want to go back to Arlington? <laughs> you ever, no. you're going to retire in Arlington, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I have a lot more fondness for Texas now than I did. Yeah, yeah. I would totally, I would probably live in Austin, you know? Yeah. There is a charm to that state. They're so Texas about everything. They are very, it's its own culture in a lot of yeah, ways. Yeah. It's like, so mm. I love, that's one of my favorite states. Okay. Yeah. It really is. I, like, I found that people often have a strong opinion on it. If you say yeah. you're like from Missouri, people are like, they don't really have a strong opinion. One yeah, way that. Just, a lot of times the opinion is very negative about Texas. And yeah. It's all like, cause I mean, Texas you know. goes out of their way to have a very strong personality. They do. In anything that has a yeah. strong personality, it's going to get strong opinions. I love it. The people okay, are fucking yeah. larger than life. Yeah. And very proud of their fucking shit. And, and yeah. that leads to like, yeah, cool. I mean, the food is like the fucking best. Yes, chicken fried steak has always been something I thought was hilarious. 
Yeah, and barbecue, barbecue and yeah. I mean just the way they do it. It's like you go to a barbecue joint and there's just like fucking smokers going in parking lots yeah. and like they go crazy with it. And then it's among they the do. best food I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean I I I got a lot more fondness for it once I which I think yeah. happens to a lot of people. I guess you've lived in this area yeah. like pretty much your whole life. So but you know, I definitely follow the Texas Rangers and the Cowboys. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, when I was a fun. kid I was like, Ah, oh, I'm so tired of football and now I I'm interested in my high school football team, which I can't that's believe. So funny, dude! <laughs> yeah, that's so I can't funny. Believe. Driving, driving to a, a football game, listening to Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. The Roger Desai story. That is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. All right, we're at two hours. Okay, let's cool. call it. We did it. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me on. It was. It was. Um, where really can people find you? Uh, probably if you Google Raj Desai, you'll find me R A J uh-huh. and then D E S A I, or my Twitter is at underscore Raj Desai R A J D E S A I. Instagram, you have that? I am not on Instagram now. Okay, we're well, one of the few holdouts. I am. I would probably. I think uh, getting on Twitter was enough. For was me. enough. Okay. <laughs> uh, website anyone can go to. Or? Uh, yeah. I th- I have a Tumblr site that is okay. essentially a website. Yeah. Okay. Which so probably Twitter is the best way to find me. Okay. At there you un- have it. Underscore Raj Desai. Yeah. Find him on Twitter. You're very funny on Twitter too. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you likewise. That helps. Yeah. Um, um, and then watch if you haven't seen yet the White House Correspondence Center that can like be found in, in its entirety. It's on YouTube. On, yeah, check it YouTube. out. I think it's, that's where um, I saw it. Um, it's really, really good. It. It's really funny. And if you forgot from two hours ago, he wrote on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if so much has been discussed, yeah. you forgot that's where we started. Yeah. Um, you wrote on it and it was great. Thank so you. So again, good yeah. job. Um, Thank you. All right. And then I will see you guys next week.